Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzon. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy, I am the COVID kid. I am COVID barely 18. I am John Fahey. I am your host. Joining me as ever, a thinker, a stinker, a pee pee drinker, high functioning pervert, my friend, Aaron Joseph Peter. Give me that pee pee. I want that pee pee. I gotta have that pee pee. Uh, to your right and my left, the Frenchman, henchman, handsome young Matt Brousseau. Hi. Hi, how are Bonsoir. you? Hi, how are you? Matt <laughs> Uh I was, uh, you know, we got some, uh, our Patreon episode, which you can uh, subscribe to for $5 a month. Get an extra episode per week. I mean, it's a fucking latte a month. But, but, uh, hi. Exactly right. For four episodes. I mean, oh my God. I mean, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I mean it, you oh, can oh listen to half an episode. You'll take a shit. Mm-hmm. You don't need a latte. <laughs> yeah. That's, a That's how so. we do it. Um... The last one we had a very fun discussion on spiritual narcissism. That's, That's right. Got some nice comments about that. Mm-hmm. Um, and Matt, you of course told us about things found last year. Yeah. In the rectum. Yeah, things people went to the ER for. Oh God. Damn and now think damn about damn near killed them. Now Should think about all the stuff they didn't go in. Exactly. For. Yeah. That's just what they know about. Now, um, uh, we have a, a wonderful listener, a uh, long time, um. Colin, um, and he, he, he call <laughs> first time caller. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, he, he, he did it an expertly told story. Um, and I just wanted to share it with you guys. Colin said I, I, I could, I, and, um, I could name him. Um, thank you, Colin. Thanks, Colin. And, uh, so he goes, he messages me, um, after the episode and he goes, also, I got an apple stuck in a girl's vagina once, and mm-hmm. it was the very devil to get that out of there. God oh, damn it. God. And I say, dude, what the hell? <laughs> and then yeah, I, that's the right response. And then I said, how does that entire thing go down? And he goes, I'm about to go on break, I'll tell you. Uh, so she's like the Wicked Witch. <laughs> um, she was my teacher, see? Uh, <laughs> And that was her pet. Health class. And he goes, so back in the day, I had this girlfriend, cute, petite chick. Her parents go out of town, so she asked me to come over. She's just turned 21. I'm still 20, so not a huge drinker. She has a bottle of vodka. We clown that motherfucker. <laughs> Having circus sex for hours. We're trashed. I'm is, ro- is that a reference to um, uh, uh, Iceberg Slim where he talks about circus love? Uh, I don't be, well, you'll have to ask Colin. Colin, please weigh in with that. Please do. Please answer Aaron's questions. <laughs> um, he goes, we're trashed. I'm rubbing her. She says, I'm sore. Get something cold and rub it. I go to the freezer. We used all the ice. Drinking the vodka, you see? And he goes, Colin, you gotta. He goes, I open the fridge. Water bag. The only things in there are drinks and apples. Apples in the fridge, for God's sake. Is they live in an orchard? Red Delicious, as yep. you may know, only half of that is accurate. Decent size. Yeah, one bite. Goes I back. palm one and roll back over to the couch. Apples have those five nubs on the bottom. Don't act like you don't know. So I start rubbing those on her clit, her lips, twisting. She's into it, moaning and whatnot. There had already been a lot of lube involved. <laughs> now I might have been. Yeah, you're too young. I might have been a little over exuberant with the whole thing because next thing I know, her lady mouth swallowed that some bitch up. I am shocked. The reaction from her was just a small moan. Then uh, she falls asleep. What? I'm fucked up over the whole thing, but I'm flummoxed as a motherfucker. It's like Sleeping Beauty with the <laughs> apple. Yeah, it's exactly the same. Um, that's how we got. That's just then, her up. the CD we were listening to, Beck Mellow Gold or some shit. Snow White. Sorry. Fuck you. It's 20 I, I, years I ago, and this wakes her up. The CD t- ending. She goes over the CD player to change it. I'm looking at, like her, like, at her like she's from another planet. She asks me what I'm lo- why I'm looking at her like that. I tell her, well, you've got an apple in your pussy. She tells me to go fuck myself. <laughs> I'm flabbergasted. Because she walked all the way over there. How the fuck does she not know? I tell her, just squeeze if you don't believe me. She does. Then she starts screaming at me, telling me I've got to get it out. Because no fucking way is she going to the hospital to be one of those stories. <laughs> she comes back on this the couch. How, this is how it becomes one of those stories, if you're not careful. <laughs> it is one of those stories. She comes back on the couch and spreads her lips. I, ch- I try to pull it out by the stem. Spoiler alert, vagina is stronger. <laughs> stem is now gone. I got to yeah. lube, lube up two fingers and my thumb to pull it out, Temple of Doom style. She hits the fucking ceiling, starts kicking my ass when she comes down. <laughs> I feel like I have overstayed my welcome, so I vacate the house. Craziest part, she calls me two days later, wondering why I've been avoiding her. 
We dated for like a year after that. <laughs> wow. Uh, what? But no word on how it, she got it out. Oh, he, he got he, it out he, with two fingers oh, and a thumb did. of Temple Lube. of Doom style. Yeah. Oh, okay. What did he replace it with a bean bag of equal weight? I don't. I don't know. Oh, Temple of Doom. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Kalima. Yeah. Yeah, right. Rip the heart out. Temple. I totally. Right. I. F- sorry. And then it Temple came, of they, Doom. And then it was rolling after him, and he had to leave. Yeah. No, the Temple of Doom. I I, I miss. I did the wrong indie movie. The Temple. The Temple of the Doom. <laughs> also the worst. Colin, indie thank movie. you. I, I asked. I requested to to read it on the show, and um, I really enjoyed that story quite yeah. a bit. It's a good time. God, it's really Colin, nice. Very well written. Uh, and gross. Very funny. Yeah. Like that. I like when she hits the ceiling and starts kicking his ass. And That's then she funny. comes down and kicks his ass. <laughs> you got you well, you have an apple. I don't want to come back to Well, I don't know how to bring you to you, but you have an apple in your pussy. <laughs> oh fuck yourself, stupid. She's not hurting anybody. Oh fucking shit. Get squeeze. The fuck. Get the squ- Just squeeze. Squeeze your bucket. Yeah, you gotta be really drunk. There's a lot of lube involved, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh although yeah. I heard there wasn't. No, oh, he said there was. Oh, there, there was. was. Yeah, oh, wow. that's, 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 you are missing the big that's, details. That's impressive for the for oh, youngsters. Yeah. Is it? Well, they're usually good to go. That, thank you. That's very good, Aaron. That's from Super Bad. I like that a lot. Is it? It is. I know. Um, <laughs> shout out to uh, Colin, of course, and um, gonna throw a shout out to, to uh, my friend Whitney, who sent me a, a sweet care package of all these delicious chocolate bars oh, from the UK. I and, ate one. and one apple. I had an arrow. No apples, no apple. just good, good, good chocolate. That was very sweet. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Whitney. Um, Thank you for feeding him, Whitney. Uh, yeah. Um, profiles and eccentricity on Instagram. PP Podcast on Twitter. Subscribe to the Patreon, like we said. A little bit more loose. Get into some weird shit. Mm-hmm. Can be grosser. Not always you, grosser. No, but it can be. It can also be weirder. I mean, we had certainly, that. yeah, yeah. I really did enjoy that thing with the mummies. That was that was very yeah, fun. Was oh yeah, that was weird, huh? Um, and uh, we uh, we ha- you know we have the Etsy store. Check it out that out. We got all the shirts up, including the new hard pipe hitters union shirts. We're pretty fucking far from okay. Pretty fucking far from okay, man. And that's okay. And that's a fine, fine these days. These days? Fine. I'm down with it. Um, Matt. Yes. Regale me. Okay. Oh, okay. Great. <laughs> Here we are now. Entertain us. go. That's for John, I Dance. guess. Dance. <laughs> um, we can so, go where we want to. So this is a story I first heard on the Memory Palace, which is a, a very uh, good uh, storytelling podcast. And um, and I heard it mentioned somewhere else, and I thought to myself, "Hey, wow, that sounds like a really but I could do a better fascinating story." No, and yeah. and and then I read the actually, you know, it was there is one version of this story that was the first one written um, over a hundred years ago now, and that's the one that uh, um, stuck. That's the one that permeated. You know, that's the idea. And then I read the actual story. Which I, I assumed I kept waiting for this the primary these sources to, to show up, and they never did. And I so I read I you know go through the actual story, and I went, well, the, this story itself is interesting enough. You don't need the embellishments. You don't need the the embellishments. Yeah, that's another level, but you don't need that. So what you had originally heard was the embellished truth. Yes, I see. Yeah, other otherwise known as a lie. Yes, or <laughs> fantasy, <laughs> a fairy tale. <laughs> Um, so, uh, today I'm going to, uh, bring to you the story of... The truth? Yeah, it's, yeah, I suppose it's the truth. Uh, of one, uh, Elizabeth Van Lu, mm. the, perhaps the most famous of all of the, uh, spies in the Civil War. Though she herself would not agree with that. Well, well if you're a, if you're a spy... And you're famous. Yeah, yeah, you're fucking. Yikes! Up. You'll see why. You'll see. You'll understand. Well, why. Shoot, I would if I was a spy. I disagree with being famous too. Um, and so there's a there's a few different sources. One, the big one is Southern Lady, Lady Yankee Spy by Elizabeth Farron. Mm. Southern Lady uh, Yankee Spy. There's uh, Dorothy Wickenden's pre-Civil War fight against white supremacy. Patrick Patrick Grubbs writes. Uh, 1830, 1840. That's a, those are smaller things. And and Lois Levine. With two articles she wrote about one of um, the slaves slash servants. Anyway, here we go. So this uh, so this starts at the you know beginning of the uh, the American 
the uni- country, the United States, you, you see. Huh. Uh, yeah. Beginning of the United States. Got it. Uh, so her grandfather, uh, Elizabeth's grandfather, was a man named Hillary Baker. He was a member of the Pennsylvania hmm. Constitutional Convention. There were Hillary's back then. Hmm. And his sister was Letitia Smith. I'm with him, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Zim, Zay, Zer. So Hillary Baker is a, a member of the Pennsylvania Constitutional Convention, one of the founding fathers of Pennsylvania. His sister was Letitia Smith, widely uh, known for caring for prisoners during the Revolutionary War, mm. uh, and founding member of the Pennsylvania Abolition Society, and Hillary was, and he was twice the mayor of Philadelphia. He died of yellow fever during the 1798 outbreak of yellow fever in Philadelphia. Mm. And one of the reasons is because, unlike most of the wealthy people, he didn't leave the city. He stayed in the city to help take care of people. And then he Super became spreader. One. Got it. Damn. Uh, and he left behind a three-year-old daughter named Eliza Louise mm. and his wife and then four other children. So 10 years later, his wife and Eliza, uh, his wife dies and Eliza is now an orphan. And she's sent to Richmond, Virginia, because that's where she has family. Mm -hmm. Uh, And she stays and lives with her brother. Uh, Now, Eliza, while she's in Richmond, she meets a man named John Van Lu. In 1818, they are married. And nine months later, October 15th, 1818, they have their first child, Elizabeth. And two more would follow. Okay. Just right out of the womb? Yeah. (laughs) Hey, Hey. we're not out yet. (laughs) (laughs) You should have seen what I saw. Now, uh, see what I seen. So she's born uh, October 15th, 1818. And uh, um, John, John Van Lu, the family is, 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 you know, Liza's family was rich, but, you know, the, the family she moved in with was not necessarily rich. And they kind of, they're kind of like a middle class family, basically. Hmm. Maybe upper middle class when they start out. Who's uh, to say? John Van Louis starts a, a hardware business. And R- Richmond is growing at this time. Richmond is, like most, most of these, uh, these, these cities on the eastern seaboard, you know, your Philadelphia's and Richmond's, the, you know, they're just filling and filling and filling with sure. people. Philadelphia. Right. And in Richmond, is, Richmond is, um, it has these, these large grain silos, and I think someone would say the largest grain silo in the world. You know, who the fuck knows? Uh, it's a growing population. There's a cosmopolitan air to it, people who are descendants of the founder, founders of the country, right. Right? blood relatives. It's similar to places like shit. New York and Philadelphia, except half the city is black, and 70% of those black people are slaves. Fuck. And so, you know, with the two-thirds... Uh, uh, with the Missouri Compromise three fifths? and the Three Fifths Clause, yeah. uh, you know that that gives Richmond uh, an extra, some extra clout. When you know it's like, guys, if you just if you just made them not Full slaves, slaves oh, right, you yeah. could have. I know. God. Anyway. It, now you know the oh we don't oh the other one um we don't want any blacks in our union, like in the labor unions, mm-hmm. because it'll fuck it. No, it'll double the size of your <laughs> union. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there's more more heads show up. Now, you know, it's always surprising uh, that uh, there's not a lot of logic behind it. Huh. Weird. It's actually active, uh, illogical. <laughs> yes, it's purposely. Uh, we've divided the man into fifths. You're actively making your life harder. <laughs> <laughs> Math is not our strong suit. <laughs> now, we three now. Oh, mm-hmm. One time I was three-fifths of man. <laughs> now I'm half of uh, and, and, you know, rich, you know, any place with slaves is obviously a brutal place. Uh, you know, Washington, D.C. had the largest slave auction in the world. Um, just blocks, you know, from the White House that was built by slaves. Uh, but uh, so uh, F- uh, Francis Seward, um, uh, Henry Seward would be Secretary of, uh, Secretary of State. I forget his fuck. Anyway, she's, uh, um, she mentions when the family went down to Richmond in, in, you know, like 1830s, 1840s, just on a vacation. She's out having lunch and this, she sees ten naked black boys being crying and being whipped just down the road. Jesus Christ! And she goes, "What the hell?" And this guy's like, "Yeah, I just bought them because I'm gonna go ship them down south." Good He's like, God. "I just bought them from ten different families, and, and just like it's just right in the middle of the road." Yeah. So Anyways, it's a living. Enjoy your lunch. Yeah, it's just like this, just casual. You think they got it bad? No. At the same time, in later life, life, um, I think it was Elizabeth would note that they, the southern Southerners, are 
using northern whips, whips that were built in the north. Mm. Well, the north, yeah. I mean, they have the best whips. Yes. If exactly. you want to... Well, I mean, everything built in the south is made by slaves. <laughs> yeah, <And> no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> notoriously. <laughs> notoriously, <laughs> slave-made shit sucks. They're not into it. Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, the whips don't work. <laughs> <laughs> Hit them harder. <laughs> I can't. It keeps exploding. <laughs> you got. <laughs> we got to get slaves from people that were... <laughs> we got to get whips that were made by people who were paid to make yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> we don't pay our workers. Well, you can tell this guy was happy when he made this whip. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, we... This, uh, this whip made of velvet and covered in lube. <laughs> you got these slave-made Sibians over here, and my wife hates it. <laughs> now, uh, so being Virginia, there's, you know, these the elite families in Virginia, they had bloodlines, they went back to the founders of Virginia and the country, and... You all, were, they went back all of 10 years. Yeah, I know, huh? Now, and this is just a quick thing I want to point out sure. that's, that's very interesting to me, is it's, 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 it's a rebel... Uh, country and, the and, and they're still talking about bloodlines <laughs> it's so fucked up how they're like they're so into like it's it's so built on like revolutionary fervor right and like then still all these people will be like well my damn yeah, my people go back to the mayflower and it's like you are fucking religious psychos that got kicked out of england you have well, and, and you have no pedigree like the bloodlines aren't you running away from rule by blood yes bloodlines? yes no, you're getting you're escaping no, but our bloodlines are good exactly that's yeah the, that's it's, the it's, difference it's, and, and it's also people who are so far removed from the act of revolution that they don't that no but even then they're talking about it but when, when this it, is the, what, this is over 100 years later right but still you know what i mean like that's like they, they, not over 100 years uh, well the mayflower came oh mayflower mayflower i'm sorry yes, yes right yes. so like let's say you know what 1620 1619 something like that right so it's 150 years later 140 years later but at this point oh my well not you know my it's this um they lost them they didn't they don't get the, they did not get the message of the people that came over the first place uh, yeah it's, it's so bizarre to me um well, and, that's because you and I don't have any blood pedigree, but it, I bet if we did, we wouldn't shut oh, up about it. Oh, I think we both uh, uh, come from... Peasant de folk? De decent stock? Stock? Uh, Stockade and pillory. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, you know, probably... Uh, I got fine peasant blood. Yeah, yeah. I've always said that about you. Thank you. It's just, it's, it's, it's a very odd thing for, for a country that's, you know, based on rebelling from monarchy that... There's still so much, and like I, I, I told you about that time. Like I went to that lady's house, and she, had, mm -hmm. she, had, she had bought this. I was doing a service call when I was with the furniture company, and she had this this five thousand dollars table. It was completely covered in paperwork that was like being like, "I'm a daughter of the revolution. I'm a daughter of the me." Like she had, it was just paperwork that was like levels of certifying that she came from this shit, and you go like. What does that mean about yeah. you, man? Yeah, what did, what I mean, you done? I have what, nothing. Like, what do you get out of that? What have you done now? I mean, exactly. I, uh, I, you know, it, it, it reminds me when I was, uh, I was reading the, the story about Seward um, was that, you know, I remember in elementary school when, when you're told that, like, blacks fought for the, the British and you're like, oh, man. And it's, they, they, you're told that in a way that, you're like, that makes it seem like it's bad. And then the British outlawed slavery before we did. And, it, and thinking about that now, it's like, oh, yeah, that was the right choice. Yeah. We're the country that fought to get rid of the king in order to, and then we were like, now we're fighting to keep slaves. Well, yeah, yeah. It was only six years, like, you know, like, I, I, I guess, like, I'm in the house, too, and I, I'm, I'm not assuming she talks to a lot of people. <laughs> so, like, now she's telling me about how she's a daughter of the revolution and all that stuff. And, like, then I'm just like, yeah, dope. Are you happy with... Uh, you know, I tightened up the table, you know? Right, right. And, uh, she doesn't care about the table. You're there to, no, you're I'm there about to her. listen to yeah. the shit. And it's like, uh, is any of that even really anything to be proud of? <laughs> you didn't do it. You didn't do No, but also, it's not as if it was a glorious good time. The fucking, you know, like, the pilgrims weren't the chillest. Uh, no, know? nobody was the chillest. Yeah, yeah ever. Yeah, yeah. Nobody is the chillest ever. I am. Well, then one day maybe there'll I be a fucking the chillest uh, ever. <laughs> damn it. Maybe one day there'll be a fucking folding table with pictures of you on it, and, <laughs> and some fucking mutant kid will be like, "My hey, fucking gay. great grandfather was John <laughs> Fee. <laughs> he was the chillest." Oh. He's like a fucking stained glass window of me. <laughs> he was the chillest. <laughs> he was the all-time chillest uh, ever. Damn holding it. Holding a Miller Lite. <laughs> Union made, you uh -huh. see. 
Unions were things that people had to join before we had the robots make stuff. <laughs> well, the robots and, the mu- to and before the muties came. <laughs> okay. I am actually three fifths of a mute. So, uh, you know, so even in Virginia, just uh, the church in the city was the church where Patrick Henry gave his "Give me liberty, uh, uh, liberty or give me death," uh, uh, you know, speech. Um, Kill him! Give me liberty, <laughs> give me death. Also, maybe give me a slave. Right. You know, very... Liberty is the name of my slave. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, what do they fucking tell? All right. It, it's well, you know how they they tell themselves is they say, well, they're not good enough to be treated as fully human yeah and this is a thing that you know we can touch on later because it's going to become uh that's going to be something that will come up hot button issue (laughs) well it's like you know when they say like oh you're in a different area code you can cheat on your girlfriend type of thing (laughs) that's what it is that's that's what it was i'm not saying it's right but i'm saying that's what it was for them like Hmm. here we can be free at the expense of all i mean not you know, well, I this mean, is like, our place to do what we want. This is Westworld. Okay, we'll, we'll get into an analogous example uh, 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 later. That yeah, I'm little... pretty sure mine was pretty good, though. <laughs> so, uh, so you know, um, area codes, zip codes. I'm not entirely sure the the you know whether Jonathan Van Lu was for or against, but he he owned some, and he was definitely uh, there was part of him. Part of the reason that he did was you know, he wanted to climb socially. Um, and obviously, it seems like it would be weird to be against slavery and own some. So, you know, we'll just put it out there. <laughs> Give me, it yeah, seems like he was cool a, with if it. You, yeah, if you're serious about, like, social climbing and you don't have a slave, what are you doing? That's Richmond. So he, Back then, uh, not now. In 1820, he had three. Uh, by 1830, he had nine because they had to put him on the census. By 1836, he, was do, he, he, had, he had made enough money from his hardware that he's able to purchase an entire block of land across the street from that church mm-hmm. and transform the house there into a house with 14 rooms, 18-foot-wide central hall with gardens and a piazza and a portico. And Harper's Weekly, in a tour through the area, actually did made a drawing of the house mm. and, and, and called it a, quote, fine prospect. Mm. And for Elizabeth, uh, this was... She called it the most beautiful home in the world. Mm. Uh, so... So, you know, but you know, so the money is one thing, but you still had to own people, and so by 1840, now he had 15 slaves. Good God! And uh, uh, this is Richmond, Virginia. Yes. So, did he have a plantation, or did he have? No. So he wasn't. It wasn't like a tobacco. No, I mean, they, you know, they I were. Mean, it's still slavery, but I mean, like they were. They were servants. I mean, they're so. They were he had all, people that worked for him that he didn't pay. Yes, exactly. Right. Slaves. And you, you know, they, they, they did the cooking, they tended the gardens. Probably building the home. Uh, yeah, probably some of that too. Yeah. And Which even, is then in better homes and gardens or whatever. <laughs> but so, so even with all this, they appear on the outside, they appear as a normal Southern family. Uh, an elite Southern family. They have money, they have slaves. Um, but yet every year... They also had maybe the largest library in Richmond. Every year, they set aside $50 for books. It's about $1,500 today. Hmm. And at night, her parents would lay in bed, and uh, Eliza, the mother, she would tell her husband about all the characters she had read about. She'd tell her every, she would tell him everything she had read. And Southern Bells were not supposed to be intellectual. Hmm. Uh, Northern Bells either, but basically just... <laughs> Southern, you know, Southern Bells were, this is what Frances Seward, uh, uh, she, this is what she wrote. She wrote, the moral and intellectual degradation of women increases in proportion to the homage paid by men to external charms. I'm sorry, slow that down. What, the what moral it, and intellectual degradation of women increases in proportion to the homage paid by men to external charms. The more men say you look great, the less the brain works or has to work. Should work is what they're saying. No, no, it needs to work. Right. The it's you know the more you tell a girl they're pretty, then this is this is her theory. I'm not saying I buy it, but she's saying the more you tell a girl she's pretty, the less she's gonna work on the reading. So she's saying I know shit because I'm ugly. No, she's just saying no, that. No. 
the more you overvalue this one thing, the less work is put into the other. Yes, because she was tired of as Seward's wife, she would have to put on parties all the time, and mm. and no and one have interesting things to say. No not, one was ever like, hey, no one ever was like, what, what'd you read this week? Yeah. They're like, nice tits, lady. Yeah. And sure, tell me about your fairy tales. Let me see those taters. And for Wickenden, she, she writes by her, talk by then. her estimate, dressing and socializing consumed two thirds of the time of a well off woman, making them as vapid as they presumed to be, hmm. making them as vapid as they as they were presumed to be. You're right, it was which, a full time job to look and be the stupid. Which, yeah. which, which, so this is the part that is analogous to you treat people like slaves, and then you say, "Well, look at them; right. they can't even take care of themselves." Right. And then you see these women and you, you treat them like vapid idiots. And then... Mm -hmm. Shocker, they, they then, start acting like it. Yes. Exactly. I don't know nothing. I mean nothing. I got nothing in here. But I look like a daisy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in order to increase her education, Elizabeth was sent to Philadelphia in the 1830s. There she lived uh, with relatives and um, was likely exposed to abolitionary speeches and readings. Lucretia Mott became... Uh, a, a very famous uh, abolitionist in Philadelphia. And Philadelphia at the time... Now that's was, Mott's apple juice. <laughs> ...was going through... Philadelphia at the time was going through, um, I guess what you could say, it, you know, seems like an American transition. So in the 1830s and 40s, Philadelphia was a hotbed of racial freedom and therefore racial violence. In the 20 years... Free to be violent. In that 20 years, from 1830, in the 1830s and 1840s, the city population would double to 380,000, and the black population that was 6,000 in 1800 was 15,000 in 1830. And so the city started filling out and spreading out on the outskirts, and black neighborhoods were being built up in black families, Philadelphia being a place where free blacks could live. Mm -hmm. you know, that's where they would go. You get the extra two-fifths for free. <laughs> yeah. And so, August 1834, there's an argument between blacks and whites over a carousel seat. So white Here's the thing about a carousel, it's all the back. <laughs> or the front. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Not a merry-go-round, mind you. They spin the other way. Wait, really? Yeah, the difference between a merry-go-round and a carousel is one spins... Clockwise? The other one, one counterclockwise. Whoa. <sighs> It's stupid. Anyway, so... Whoa. so We it, got this new ride? You're not going to believe it. It's nuts. <laughs> what do you call it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey, you've probably ridden a carousel yeah, before. Yeah. <laughs> but let me just... <laughs> Get ready for this one. <laughs> hey! <laughs> Mary! <laughs> Mary! It's your cousin, John. John, uh -huh. go around. Uh -huh. <laughs> you're not, you know, you know that new ride you've been looking for. <laughs> uh, I'm really sit sorry. On this. I can't. I can't. That's help okay. It. I can't help. It's that. okay. So, as you can imagine, the response to this argument over carousel seat was quietly snuffed out, and there were no issues. Mm. No, or, the white residents went on a three-day rampage in black neighborhoods, destroying two churches and over 30 homes, mm. and also the carousel. Mm. Because when you love something, you burn it to the ground. Of course. And so, as the abolition movement increased nationally, Pennsylvania at the same time sought to placate these whites, and in 1838, the Pennsylvania State Constitution rescinded the vote for free blacks. And that, of course, again, solve the problems. Yeah. Of course. Sure. Giving in to the terrorists. <laughs> so a state could just take away the rights to vote? Yeah, because they could give it. Fuck. I mean, it, this, so there's no federal law for black voting, so it was an honor. States rights. Quote, unquote. Yeah. yeah. And they're not rights if people can take them away. Yeah. Are they wrongs? Now, after receiving her education, Elizabeth returned to Richmond, and by that time, it was time to, for suitors. Um, however, she would she would never marry anybody. And there's a, there's one rumor that she had a suitor who died before they were to, would to be wed. There's no proof of this. Hmm. Uh, she was very uh, coy in her letters, and you know, flirted a lot. Hmm. But there wasn't didn't seem to be anybody that really stuck. Hmm. And 
Also, according to a friend of hers, Elizabeth would also go to the desolate areas of Richmond and help the poor. You know, between the intellectualism and the helping the poor, that is not a good look for a bell. And her friend wrote that Elizabeth instead, not necessarily instead of love, but Elizabeth's main focus was, was she was committed to a life of, quote, usefulness. Ah. She was like Princess Di. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Princess Di was a... Princess Di was fucking kissing AIDS patients on the forehead mm-hmm. and shit back in the day when they thought you could, like, catch it like COVID. Yeah. Mm. She was, like, she was in the shit. Right. And they were like, oh, what? she's supposed to be a lady, you know? You're a yeah. princess. And she's out there, you know, wearing fucking short knickers and hot, and t- tennis shoes and shit. Yeah, partying. She was Greece a lady of the people. They didn't there. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Just Get the fuck out of my face with that shit. Man, you don't know nothing about Lady Die. I think I do. Nah, I think you die. I think I do. I think you die. So, um, you know, uh, this is a. Her, her father is not in great health, and in uh, 1843, he he dies. Daddy, don't die. <laughs> and it is very devastating, you know, being the matriarch, and especially, uh, you know, a family without a, a man at the head. There's. It can be. Very dangerous because women don't have the ability to necessarily, they're not just given the land. Right. Mm. Right. They're not just, they're. There's got to be a fucking award or a. I, I forget what they're. <laughs> oh, they, wait, they use the lawyers going, oh, I. Right, right. So, so there's, there's, a, there's an interesting thing that happens. Originally, John's will, he left all of, he's, he left everything to his wife. And then he makes, an, he makes a change to his will saying that um that she's she's merely caretaking of of uh, of, the, of, of of the slaves so that way and and Varen is, seems to think that you know maybe there's a, maybe one of the reasons that it could have been is that he knew who his wife was and he knew that she would just get rid give of him all. just just so just, he didn't want to give her ownership of them because she he knew that she would let them go and and it might be bad for the family. Uh, yeah, his. No, 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 <laughs> yeah, no. It, yeah, I mean, the, the it'd way be bad for the family be, for how they might be treated because of it. Yeah, mm. yeah, exactly. Um, so, so instead, so he's like a slave owner from beyond the grave, right? Yeah, kind or of, the yeah. estate owns. Yes. You know, the trust owns the slaves, and she merely is the. Uh, it's not her fault. It's actually a legal thing. <laughs> if it was up to me, I'd let y'all go. Hands are tied. <laughs> actually, your hands are tied, but <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> So, uh, what 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 Eliza does instead is she she buys slaves to free them. She lets her slaves rent themselves out to other people. That was a, a common thing. Slaves could work for other people, and then their owner would get, you know, could take as much money from that renting as they wanted. Right. But you know, she would give them the, the money. The money, right? Uh, what she also she sold land that they owned uh, far under mar- market value to. To black families, mm. so they could have land, and it's just her way of, you know, working around the which, which she had been forced, mm. uh, 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 which her whatever. Uh, so in eighteen, the way to play the hand she was dealt. Play the hand, thank you. Now you know because Varen writes that you know, she writes that there are plenty of reasons on view in the city to make some anti-slavery, but why did Elizabeth become anti-slave? When the majority of people did not, and 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 Varen's reasoning is that it's Elizabeth's mother who's the driving force here, mm-hmm. right? In the 1850s, the reader, c- yeah. In the 1850s census, Eliza had 21 slaves. By 1860, she only had two, and they were both elderly women. Mm. Uh, she also employed two free black servants, and there's a record of at least one slave owner deeding her a slave. Under the, uh, under the con- not the condition, but under the understanding that that slave would then be sent north to freedom, mm. when it would have been cheaper to because you you would have to pay the city or the state to free a slave, right? And then there would be taxes. But the loophole, the slave laundering. Yes, exactly. You would sell it to somebody who would then get misplace them mm. or something uh, yeah, like that. Yeah, conceivably. Yeah. As opposed to paying the. Fee for freedom. Yes. Good God Almighty. God damn it. What a, what fucking, a fucking nightmare. There's always a fucking form. <laughs> yeah. Just go. Uh-huh. 
Oh, you got to pay for freedom down here. <laughs> freedom isn't free uh, uh, if you uh, haven't seen the documentary Team America. Yeah, they have to fucking free. Uh, it's a buck oh five. Mm -hmm. and, uh, in 1860 money, that's quite a pretty penny. I mean, what an absolute crime. Uh, all these people fucking screaming about liberty and all these bollocks. <laughs> yes, yes. And then fucking like, oh. Because uh, then part of the liberty, was the liberty to own slaves. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, that was kind of the thing, you know, it was, it was you know, this thing of, of um, hey, we got a good thing going here with the slave labor, we're going to make a lot of fucking money, let's get fucking rid of the yoke of England, you know what I mean, like, that was and put it on these guys. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. one of the reasons why the 1619 Project uh, has, has, like, one of the reasons that people are, are some people are so angry about it is because it, it posits ideas like that. One of the reasons we broke off from England was so we could keep slaves. Which is a nightmare. <laughs> and True. Yeah, but it's you mean true. that's why the colonies broke yes, off? Yes, right, yes, right, right. yes. Don't no. say we. <laughs> no, but it's it's the United it, States. It's a new. A you're not part of the fucking Boston Celtics, and you're not part of <laughs> slave owning Americans. So <laughs> we, don't we, fucking say we. No, Wait, whoa, 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 what are you talking about? We didn't know. Don't I, we didn't own slaves? You well, not, but I know I didn't. Sure, know sure. Slaves. But you are a white man in America, so there's this yes, is, of course. Some, as a country, and as a country, yes, you're a citizen. You have a passport. Of course, of course, but like. We didn't break off from anything. No, but it, it, yeah, it's it's a thing of like you know the romance of the whole thing is really just uh, the romance is absurd. It's 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 grabbing a scam with two hands. Oh yeah, and being like, listen, man, they're all the fucking way over there. We could keep the shit for ourselves. Let's get rid of them. You know. Yeah. Yes. And um, you know, it takes fucking three months for a letter to get over there. Yeah. We can do whatever we want. But in the meantime, we'll drape it in all this fucking lefty goddamn liberty fucking shit. <sighs> <laughs> but yeah, that was the thing. Like you said, like even you know the the quote unquote elevated minds or the the you know the compassionate people mm -hmm. like your Washingtons and stuff. They still had slaves because mm. it was the thing. If you didn't well, have one, to be fair, were, Washington was not compassionate. No, no, no. But the, the uh, but Washington, the, the, wa the framers of the Constitution and the, de the framers of the Declaration of Independence right. for their time were better than. The other people who were yeah, I mean, many of them were, recognized. Were, listen, man, you have an iPhone. I mean, who built that shit? <laughs> the, 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 you Matt, know. Is that true that you? We can tweet about I hate slavery, but I have no, an iPhone. Actually, I don't. I, I, well, these are iPhones. Those are. I have a Pixel. I got a guy bragging. Phone. It was cheap. <laughs> nice. but, there, but there are. I mean, there are plenty of people around back then who are saying slavery is bad. Absolutely, but but there is a uh, there's a societal demand upon those. Aristocratic people, and they were also to radical have, to Marxists. have a slave, <laughs> <laughs> to have slaves. Well, I mean, there's, there was a uh, a gardening demand in Jefferson's plantation, to have slaves. <laughs> mm. uh, and I it, it I, was pretty nice. Yes. No, I, I I think there was a thing that it was a, a stepping stone argument for a lot of people, where they go like, "Listen, man, there's so much fucking money tied up in this." Like, well, the, the we, Missouri compromise compromise was the everybody knew the whole point of it was to make a union. And then we'll deal with the slave thing later. Of course. Yeah. Even yeah, I, I think yeah, it was Madison or someone, I think it was Madison writing like, this is going to be bad when they deal with it. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Well, Washington yeah. wouldn't talk about it. He did own slaves, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't even bring it up because he knew it was just the ruin of the country already. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A tough start. Anyway. So, uh, within tougher the, for the slaves. <laughs> yeah. Within this family, there's also the peculiar case of a slave named Mary Jane Richards. She would have another name like Mary Jane Bowser, Mary Jane, and because uh, you know she would marry and take on a name here. But anyway, let's we'll just call her Mary Jane. So uh, she was MJ. She, she was uh, like a, a cho She was like the there. She was the favorite of everybody in the family. Uh, I think she went there when she was young. She, I, th I believe, she was bap she was baptized in a black church in Richmond. They brought her to a black church to baptize her. Uh, they sent her to Philadelphia for her education, um, and then, you know, like many abolitionists at the time, they thought, well, Liberia, that's a thing. We'll send her there, mm -hmm. and so she went to Liberia, and she said, "No, it's bad here." <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> She wrote back, get me out of here. It's bad. Things are yeah. not working out. And yeah. it's not any better now. <laughs> weird. The United States just uh, was weird. Monroeville. And um, so, so, so Elizabeth, you know, right, reaches out and um, 
to get Mary back uh, to the United States. Um, and even to, she's like, Mary has to ride first class and they, she rides steerage. Um, and then they get married. And, the, and even the guy that Elizabeth is riding with, he's like, I'm going to give this slave back to you? Is that? And Elizabeth is like, trust me, we love her. And so they get her back, and it's actually illegal for Mary Jane to be back in Richmond. Richmond had a rule or a law no that any, any slave that was educated in a free state could not return. <laughs> Good God. To a non to Oh, a because they might poison the water. They, they might know stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, they might spread yeah. their propaganda. Right, so is that, we don't want any rumors here. So a lot of the story about Mary Jane is found like through census, through the baptism, through she's once arrested, but when she comes back to Richmond, she doesn't have papers because she's going around like she's a free black woman because, you know, in essence, she, she basically is. She's been to fucking Africa. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, there, during this time, there's at least nine slaves Elizabeth buys and sets free. And many would stay with her. And at least one stayed with her uh, until she died. Yeah, I mean, there's this thing, too, where you go, like, if you're nice enough to do this to me, where should I go that would be safer? Right, exactly. Which is a horrible thing to have to deal with, of course. But well, it's, well, that, that's, that's in why, self-preservation. Yeah, other places, I don't know any. That's why Harriet Tubman brought everybody to Canada. She said, I don't trust anywhere in America. Mm-hmm. You're going to Canada. She yeah. insisted on bringing everybody to camp. These guys are weird up here, but they're cool. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> so hockey's a thing. Now, they call their strippers peelers. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Ew, Aaron, is it true? Yeah. And, and then peelers so- in the UK are the cops because of J- Sir John Peel. Is that right? That's exactly right. The peelers. Keep an eye out for the peelers. The peelers. Yeah. So, uh... So, so there, again, this, so this double life is happening, not just with the Southern Bell thing. They put gravy on their French fries. <laughs> it's, the, I mean, the, these guys the, mean business. The double life with, uh, with the Van Loos. You know, they're, they're, by all appearances, they're proper Southern Bells. And their weirdness can be explained as, you know, the mom is now a spinster. And mm. the, or the no, mom's a widow, the daughter's a spinster. And, okay, they're kind of weird. You know, they're, they're playing up this idea that... Uh, we these weird women that don't confer, mm-hmm. conform to the proper Southern etiquette. But at but, least they have slaves. Yeah, yes. And so, so we know they're good people. Yes. Yeah. We and, do things well, their husband's dead and there's no men in the house, but they seem to have money in slaves. Mm-hmm, yeah. So by all accounts, the neighborhood's looking great. Yeah. At least they're just subjugating other people. <laughs> I mean... And, 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 you That's know, gotta count for something. They, they, <laughs> they could have sold everything and left the city, mm-hmm. but you know, it's like we've talked about, you know, they were no, the, no you move. It they was were the like above. Yes, yes, they advice. were the above ground railroad. <laughs> yeah, yes, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's very good. Hi. <laughs> Is that like a tram or <laughs> monorail? Yeah, monorail. <laughs> it's like um, the opposite of the get out family. Hmm. Yes. The motion picture, get out. Yes. Hmm. Right. Let's get in. <laughs> We're getting out of here. Yeah. You need to get in so you can get out. Uh, so, so Unless you want to uh, stay, which is cool, too. So things are going to, um, I don't know, move if move quickly is the right word. But uh, the things are going to be happening uh, pretty violently in the United States. Uh, things uh, are escalating. In, in, in late 1859. And uh, What happened? We'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to that uh, right after this break. Jack. Doc Brown doesn't show up for another 25 <laughs> years. No, but John Brown does. We got to go back, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> John Brown and yeah. his army. Yeah. Hey, yeah, fucking nice. Right, at, right after this break. That's a good white guy. What? What break? The break we're taking now. We should take a you break. Talking about the severing of the country and fuck are we breaking up, dude? Are we ending the show? Is the show over. <laughs> Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back, folks. And we're back. Hey. Hey, that's great. Hey, man. This is a bit burger. Don't just be a Yeah. This is the beer choice of Magneto. Is yeah. that true? And that means it's good enough for me. It's also basically uh, you know, the 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 German equivalent of, of Budweiser. It is the number one German 
selling beer. Right, but it's good. It's number eins? Yes. In it's Deutschland? Nummer eins. Nummer eins. Nummer eins? Budweiser is fine. Budweiser is fine, and Budweiser is also... owned by a German company now, anyways. Yeah, it's true. Best, it, best made uh, German and It also d- comes from an old Czech. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, why? Yeah, but why? Yeah, uh, yeah, there's but, a Bush family. Budweiser's brother. Yeah. Budweiser. <laughs> Bud Dwyer. Yeah. <laughs> so good, you'll want to shoot you. <laughs> One of these and you're out. <laughs> uh, Everybody calm down. <laughs> this will hurt someone. Uh, put, they, put, should put, have, they should have that out. No, no. <laughs> this will hurt someone. Drink it out of a manila envelope. <laughs> I love I love it so much. Somebody, everybody settle down. Somebody call. Bud yeah. Dwyer's beer should be a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. One and done. It's one of my favorite oh, samples like ever on the Swarm, which I probably played on Jukebox because because you you hear like ah oh! after the fucking the, the gunshot, and you go, some guy gets up, takes the mic. Automatically a fucking deep because uh, uh, everybody settled down. Somebody called the ambulance <laughs> looks and, at him. and the doctor. <laughs> he goes, try to show some decorum, please. Try to show some decorum. And then he goes, Jesus, dear God in heaven. <laughs> Immediately. Immediately, that is like the first. I know we're coming back from break and all that shit, but that is like I think that was the first like faces of death thing that I ever saw that yeah. was real. Yeah, I can see that. Mm-hmm. That was something. Gee, and I think that's all I needed to see. Yeah, man. You know, it's, I, I don't. I don't need to see I, ISIS I, I, video. I, I, I don't anything. have a taste for that shit at all. I don't. It doesn't. It's. It's. Uh, you know, even having done the, the Christine Chubbuck mm-hmm. episode, mm-hmm. I have no desire to see that. No, footage. I don't want to. No, I, no, um, no, 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 no. I don't even like. See, I don't like seeing. Here's the thing. I don't like. Like at sporting events, I don't like l- watching the person sing the national anthem. Because I, I feel like they're going to fuck up, and I don't mm. want to see that. Mm. Right. I don't like watching skateboarding videos when the guy hits the nuts on the railing. Because yeah, it's my that's fucking different. taint. That's different. Yeah, I don't want to see any of that shit. I have been to uh, Los Angeles' Museum of Death twice. You know, um, I think the time I went back, it was, you know, my, Joe was visiting. Um, shout out to Joe Latchett. Shout out to Joe. Um, great profile, greater, mm, even better teacher. That was a very nice time. Yeah, and uh, he, but I was, I, you know, every time I go, it's I'm nauseous when I leave, and it's not, you know, I like it's really interesting. It's very fascinating. Um, it's a thing I want to indulge sometimes, but like, I don't know, man. I like, don't want to see people in the act of dying, and not only that too, but like, you know, like, I, you know, I understand you know people's fascination with like dark, dark, true crime, but like. I, I fucking can't really do it. I'll fucking do like fictional horror movies all day long, but like really gnarly true crime. Sometimes we kind of cross over into sure. it, but I I just avoid shit that seems like I fucking. Well, you're a coward. Um, and well, I, I'm a coward. I, yeah, I mean, the one, time, the one time I did it, you were like, this Panzerim fucking profile is a bummer. <laughs> and I was like, great notes, Aaron. <laughs> anyway, folks, bye. <laughs> I'm a coward. I'm uh, the first to admit it. <laughs> but yeah, it's um it, it does it does sway me sometimes against doing certain profiles, even though the, the subject matter can be interesting. Yeah, it's, go it's back cr- to episode three, Carl Panzram, where I, think I am it's, bummed. It's sick. It's sick. Yikes. And also definitely but the, the Christine Chubbuck one is actually very good. It's a quite good episode. Quite good. And also the story of Carl Panzram is it's very interesting. Pretty it's, intense. It's, it's, it's it is worth a ride. John Brown. April, uh, October 16th, 1859, John Brown and his sons, they raid Harper's Ferry. They had planned on a revolution. Now, talk, talk, talk about that. What, what's up with the raid on Har- Harper's Ferry specifically? Well, John Brown is a, a very interesting character. TV with, show with, on stars right now. Worth, with worth, a, worth a profile. Oh, right. He definitely worth a profile. Mm-hmm. Um, he was a, white a religious guy. man. Uh, may, I don't know if he was always a religious man, but he became very religious and he, and he had a belief that uh, o- almost that he was kind of destined to be a martyr. I'm not ent- entirely sure. I don't know enough. Yeah. Um, but he had a belief that if he was an ardent, ardent abolitionist and slavery was, um, you know, a sin uh, with no equals almost. And, and Even though they give you the rules for it in the Bible. And uh, he believed that if he ra- if he made his way to Harper's Ferry... And he he, he uh, would be able to to along the way there um, 
get a group of slaves right. to follow him. Right. Uh, whether they raided, uh, you know, uh, plantations or what, and I don't even know if Harper's Ferry was was the, the you know, the genesis of the idea. That might have just been the thing he fell on, and when when everything else didn't work. And it's out. an actual ferry. It's a yeah, it's wings, a, tiara, the whole yes. nine. <laughs> it's a, it crossed a river. You it's know, boat, it's yeah. it's it was, but it was also um, a, a a it's where an arsenal of guns uh, stored, and him and his sons. Uh, you know, took that, and then of course the the you know the federal army showed up yeah. and had a shootout with him, and he mm. surrendered, and um, you know, but he but, but the whole like, idea oh, you, got, you got the juice now, huh? The whole idea of his raid was to uh, kind of start a revolution of sorts, and the revolution instead was the South going, they're going to take our slaves. Look at that, yeah. and so he he you know his his, his Obama. His, Wants to take your slaves away. I mean, so I, I wrote it as the the South responds with a "see what you made me do" yes. mentality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The South, much like <laughs> we're we're seeing, we've seen recently in the in the United States with Republican Congress people going, "Well, you can't call them bad people because then they're going to do bad stuff." And you go, "This is an abusive relationship." Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. See what you made me do. You made me hit you because Let's you're just not- act like everything's okay. Yes, hey. Exactly. <laughs> What a joke. What, and, a, what a fucking joke. Fucking joke. And so, of course, naturally, uh, rich man, Richmond, being such a central uh, spar, uh, a spot in the Confederacy, uh, the eventual Confederacy, Richmond just, just completely changes almost overnight. And Elizabeth writes that it is, it's dangerous. Now it's dangerous to talk of abolition. Um, she had run into and talked with various politicians, you know, at this like Springs, Sulphur Springs, I think it was called, that she would go to. And she would talk to these politicians and they said, you know, either they were ardently for secession or they were worried that if they weren't, they would, uh, you know, there might be, you know, they were in danger. The people that were for, for secession, um, the 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 vitriol spread and was so strong that anyone who talked against it, people were saying that we should hang anybody who's against it. Jesus and Christ! We, we, well, you 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 necessarily couldn't say they're abolitionists in the legislature. They're the Whig Party. The people who were in the Whig Party were often they were Unionists more than not. And even the governor who was elected in uh, 1859, I believe, was a Unionist. And people saying we need to preserve the Union. Mm. I'm not necessarily pro or anti-slavery. We need to figure out a way to keep the country together. Which is, you know, it's there's a certain type of half-hearted cowardice. Whatever. Politics. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's 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 it is a thing where you it's you know, the thing they ended up with was this this, you know, pushing states rights, which was just code for states rights to own slaves. Do what I want. Yeah, or or to to be more horrible with Jim Crow and all that stuff that right. followed. That was like the eventual compromise that ended up at. I think to ah. in the name of preserving peace. Right, uh, but it's also what it is. Also, it's preserving coastline. It's preserving ports and military advantage. Right. If you get, if you let a country, if you let half of the country secede. Then you lose New Orleans, mm-hmm. you lose Florida, you lose all that. Right, that becomes somewhere else. And I'm not, I'm not saying there. Yeah, there I'm is not. a constant belief among people who tried to hem in the middle that we'll slowly get there. We'll slowly get there. Yes. We'll slowly yeah, yeah, get there. Yeah, yeah. Any any day now. And it was it was guys like John Brown who who, who you know who put that idea to the you know he said, Why we've wait? been saying that for almost a hundred years. I mean, come on. We're not going to get there. That's the fucking thing, man. Unless that, you that is go ex- there. Is actually the thing we've talked about on this show before, but it is the thing between, you know, Malcolm X and 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 Dr. Dr. King, and it is you know, you know, one day, and he goes like, "What? Like when I'm dead?" Yeah, that was kind of the response from Malcolm, right, and, right. and John Brown is making the same uh, Malcolm argument, mm-hmm. and um, but then it's it's funny that even you know all, all these many years later you have um. The uh, uh, the moderate viewpoint espoused by Obama, which is the it's a big ship. The arc the arc yeah. of history is long, but it bends towards justice. Right, and well, so, I'm okay, but I know what you mean. Well, he quotes it. Yes, he, yes, yes. he quotes it uh, a lot, and um, he believes it. 
You know, it's like, right. uh, let's, let, we, you know, it's one of those things where you go like a very ignorant white people with a, a, a sense of entitlement. Hastiness does not work on them. Sure. Well, well, because they're, you know, there's the the beneficiaries of the status quo. Yeah. But I don't, I don't think, uh, of course, afraid that any quick movement will knock them off whatever. Right. Perch they have. But it's just so, it's just so crazy that it's been this very long argument that has divided the black community and, and, and and the, the the general progressive community, as we're saying, you know, John Brown. Sure, 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 sure. For the longest time. even, Even today, the, you know, there's still people on Twitter who are saying Biden's not listen progressive enough and they're always going to be there whatever but that's sure. but there's there, there's always hard progressive mm-hmm. soft progressive there you know times and places everything is relative to its own thing but the the general waves it does seem there is this repetition of should we push hard or maybe maybe everybody will come to their sense mm-hmm. but then we you know you also see look at what happened with Obama? He wanted to make incremental change. And yes. every single, even incremental change is still, right. is still stymied. And there's a thing too, where you go like, do, do the, you know, like the Watts riots and things like that. Do they not force a conversation to happen? And mm-hmm. as Aaron, Aaron Noe says, you know, how are we going to talk about it if we don't talk about it? And what is going to cause us to talk about it except drastic action? The Civil War would have started. Which but is then like, also the but, Watts riots were the first implementation of fucking SWAT. And right, and that is another, yes. Then the hyper militarization of police. So like, you're right. Do not one, do not let the storming of the Capitol now become no one gets to go there. Right. And don't let it become let's call anybody a terrorist. Mm-hmm. Right. So like, there's a dance there, and I don't know how to do that dance. <laughs> uh, yeah. But you do have to know that it is a dance. No, I, I can just completely empathize with both points of view. Totally. Where totally. I'm, because I'm just like I want it now. These fucking things. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. and we all know that we all want it now. Yes. And some people don't, but they suck. But, but there is kind and of, if we want it and we can do it, we should do it. Right, right. But there is also like But this, what if this, it all breaks? This wise sensei nature to just being like just calm down and take your time. Can we call poverty a terrorist and then obliterate it? What if we just do that? Not on my watch. Well, there was a war on poverty briefly under LBJ. Why they got a war on, got instead of a war on poverty, they got a war on drugs so the police can bother me. Thank you. So, uh, the success, secessionists would become the powerful entity in Richmond. I mean, the, you know, between the power of the slaveholders and, you know, the elites, that was what they wanted. But even the secessionists either bought or took the only unionist paper in the city in Richmond and they fired all the staff. And so now there wasn't even like, a, there wasn't even a newspaper that was going to argue the other way. Right. Uh, the uh, another paper in the city after Lincoln was inaugurated, they wrote, "quote The inaugural address of Lincoln inaugurates civil war," which is and Lincoln saying, "Hey, let us work together," and they're like, "No war." Oh yeah, yeah, very helpful. So this would continue. The temperature would continue rising and rising and rising until South Carolina fires on Fort Sumter in April 1861. Virginia. Uh, convenes a, a, a Congress of their own. They vote to secede, and Elizabeth sees this city go hard mm. to success, secession. And the North says, hey, we still really like cotton, and we're, we're not going to let you leave. And, and the North... Hey, you. <laughs> I mean, so Seward and Lincoln were, were rivals, and Seward, Henry Seward, he runs on abolition... And Lincoln is elected because he's seen as the moderate, the moderate, and the, the man not, that not, won't and, cause and, but, and will not outlaw slavery. And you see what happens. There's no new state. Very similar to what happened. Like again, Obama thinking, well, I'll just the, the North says, well, we'll just we'll give them the guy we think they want. Right. And I guess in the case of Biden, it kind of worked. But well, I mean, day one, I mean, here's we'll the, I mean, see. Anyway, I, we could, I'll save that whole Biden. No, but there, I, no, you're right that there is, there are, uh, so, so uh, parallel. There, sh- there may, may or may not be parallels. I'm Trump. just saying, Trump, Trump wins the election if he gives everybody checks with two thousand dollars in him. That's mm. that's anyway. Well, he really is. That, Sadly, he I don't agree with it, but that's what it, that's. They could uh, Patreon. Anyway, so there's so <laughs> so there are certainly Northern Southerners. And and Varen writes that you know historian Stephen Ash, <laughs> no, that's a, no, connected. No, yeah, be, well, be, be, because born it, and raised. Actually, if you just joining us, you're listening <laughs> to Schenectady. 
uh, keep Poughkeepsie, uh, 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 you know, uh, I can Poughkeepsie a secret. Can so, you? So there's three, there's three, uh, of, uh, uh, principles of the of Northern Southerners. And the first is a connection to the North. You know, having some family there, you know, you have some idea of what's happening there, right? The second is a wellspring, uh, a, a wellspring of partisan affiliation. Former Whigs, right? Uh, people, uh, quote, penchant for economic modernization. Uh, and the third is social standing. The plain folk generally were uh, uh, against the, the high pla minded, the, the planter class and the elitist secession. You remember the planter class, a lot of the farmers had a shit ton of money with these, you know, plantations. We're not talking well, about right, well, they were paying their workers, right? Yeah, now, so these three ideas, however, don't exactly fit Elizabeth. I mean, yes, her grandfather's a founding father, right, of, of in Pennsylvania. So, so she has this fam familial ancestry, right? Uh, and she spends her own money freeing slaves. Yes. She's not, she's not the same at all. Yes, exactly. She's her own woman. But also the brute, you know, as Varen Rice said, the, the brute force of secession for the first time in Elizabeth's life made her finally confront slavery and not dance around the edges. So this, of, here's, here's my question. You mentioned... Um, we talked about like a, a incremental shit, mm -hmm. right? Do the succession? Do the secessionists have a point with? Oh, fuck this compromise shit. We want it now. We'll just we're gonna secede instead of making it. right. In their well, eyes, it's well. Let's just get it done now instead of wait and make a compromise down. No, 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 no. I don't understand what you're saying. So it's, instead of gradual change to the country becoming uh, slave owners, we'll just leave and make our own. The, the South makes a drastic change, right? They we'll leave and make our own what? Country. Country. Slaves. That's what succession, secession is. Yes, I understand. Okay, so, you're, so are you saying it's like a progressive choice to secede no, 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 for no, slavery? No, 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 no. We're talking about extreme choices for a, right. for, for a it, slow it, it's change. It's their, gradual change. you know, they want it now. Oh, yes, yes. I definitely, I definitely think that's the thing. Um, and I think it very, it very much ties and in. And it shows that it didn't work. It also just try, it ties into you know the modern day brattiness of like the well no now I want I want it to be okay to be racist but it's not so modern no, I mean but, it's not but, so modern day but also we, we we can't necessarily conflate the idea of everybody's a human being with free right we're not <laughs> you know no no even 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 like today it would be like hey what if we uh, had less greenhouse gases and then the opposite argument is we need more coal plants and it's like but no those aren't no one's using Absolutely. those and then back then the the two arguments are everybody is a human and no i want to own slaves right. and so those uh, yes. so so the, the 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 gradual change there is no gradual change when it comes to owning human yeah, beings, well, there was no. three fifths, well, right? But that was not <laughs> nothing changed. It except was the, the hope. except the delegate. It count. was each of them kicking the the only thing that changed were the people arguing it. Right. Okay. So you're saying kicking the can further down the road. I, yeah. I I agree. But but what I'm saying is, I think a lot of the things that that start there uh, is uh, probably the idea of the uh, the northern elite. Dictating things in the South and like those sorts of things start and popping them up. washing their hands of reaping the benefits of slavery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also the thing you're saying too. It was you, very convenient to say we don't own slaves, but listen, they're getting shit. They're getting tobacco from the South. They're right. getting cotton it's, from the it, South at a real cheap right. price, Absolute, and absolutely. they don't have to see it. Right, absolutely. And they don't absolutely. want that shit to change either. Which is the liberal elite thing, and it's the exact same thing with the queen, you know, reading Uncle Tom's Cabin and crying <laughs> yes, while exactly. England is ready to build a blockade <laughs> around the South yeah. to keep their cotton coming yeah. in. Yes, you go like, "Will you suck my fucking dick, please, yeah. with your fucking tears? Shut yeah. up!" Oh, and then putting sugar in their tea and all sorts of shit. Yeah, where do you think that sugar came? It's from? yeah, it's it's just uh, I I yeah I I I get that. Um, but you today's know. episode is brought to you by iPhones. <laughs> yes, exactly. Made by kids that are with, blind with with mi conflict minerals. iPhones. You're right. You're right. So, Shot on iPhones. You're gonna probably listen to this on an iPhone. Enjoy it. So so uh, when succession when, when secession blows up and. And the war fever, or secession fever, it's not yet war, but secession fever is running through Richmond. Elizabeth, for the first time in her life, is fair and rights. 
is con- she for the first time in her life there's no veil there's no I'm working around the edges mm-hmm. there's no more I'm I pretending can, to be a bell of the ball today. so and she 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 writes and I think this is from a journal that she that she may have written after uh, but she she wrote a lot either during the Civil War and, and after about these times. And Elizabeth Van Lu writes, quote, Slave power is arrogant, is jealous, is cruel, is despotic. It takes away a man's moral courage, replacing it with brute valor and arrogance. And she, Varen, points out this is why Southern men or people in general would boast that one Southern man could beat 500 Yankees. Because it... <laughs> They've worked their own they ego their up own and mind. Yeah, worked up their own uh, mythos. And Elizabeth writes, she writes, slave power crushes freedom of speech and opinion. Mm. And just in that 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 simple act of of owning someone, you, you by by making yourself okay with that, you have completely shifted your own beliefs of reality. Yes, yes. You start to believe your own bullshit. Yes. Because but yeah, it, why it, would you it, own it, someone unless you were some right. But also you, you, you're, you're, believe, you're believing a, 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 a sort of godliness, which is... You know, it's like guys that kick dogs and think they're hot shit. It's the idea of deserve. Uh, yeah, man. But, but, it, but it's like this thing, too, where, like, uh, you know, I, I was saying to you guys, I, you know, I started going down this road, and it was in uh, the concentration camps and in the American penal system, and in slavery and stuff, where it's just like, once you have a person in a cage, the inevitable thing to do with them is to humiliate and torture them and and uh, get off on it. It, it. it seems like only because those jobs select for a certain type of person. But also it seems they can't like... can build that. But then you, then you can start to... But I think there's almost a thing, too, where you go, like, if you're here, you, you deserve, deserve it. it. Yes. And then you build yourself. Like that's a Stanford prison experiment and all that shit. And yeah, and you know, like one time I was saying, it's like a psycho goddamn prison guard, and he was talking about like, oh, these guys will say shit about, you know, when I get out, I'll attack your family. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and I, I fucking, you know, I, I lay into them. I'm like, am I supposed to be impressed that you're beating a man in a cage? Yeah. Right. Whose only fucking thing he can say is to freak you out. The only thing he can just be like, all when, when is- I get out, you know, I'm like, I'm like, and. I'm supposed to be impressed with you. Right. I'm like, and and imagine like, let's say you're a good person and you go into the fucking uh, ref- correctional system because you really have a fucking hard on for justice and rehabilitation. Mm-hmm. You're gonna be the only guard like that, and if you don't start being a fucking asshole, right. they're gonna wash you out, or you're gonna get like, your ass kicked. I, I mean, it, we it, see it, the cops all the time. But no, yeah. there's the 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 guard of Carl Panzram that gave him all the. Paper and everything to write his autobiography. Walked into the cell, turned yeah, his back yeah. to him, and Panzerum is like, "Yeah, well, there's always the Tom Hanks in the Green Mile. There's <laughs> right, always right. that." Well, I don't think there is always. I think it's incredibly rare. That's why it's not just Tom Hanks. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Also, there's rare. only one. <laughs> thank you. COVID free. Thank God. Um, inauguration. But yeah, I, I, it's, it, there's, a, there's just like a very, very weird thing that happens, and I think everything she says is absolutely correct, and. It doesn't only, uh, you know, subjugate, you know, people's rights and logic. It also boosts the oppressed. This horrible ego. Yeah. And, and and it's just so fucking sick to me. Well, because yeah. because the you know, you you you've built this idea that they deserve, which itself is illogical and not human. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, you believe that the abilities of you and your people. Are exceptional and not human, oh, right? Because you're you're doing the exact same yeah. thing in the other direction. And yes. I, I don't want I don't want to stay on this too long either, because I know you, we need to move along here. Yeah. But I just want to say there is also one of the few things you, that everybody has and references always is the Bible at this time. Yes, and slavery is the f- slaves are freed in the Bible, and people just go like, oh, but that but also was there's that. Rule, and you like so what was. <laughs> Were we more liberal? Yeah, but no, also, no, there's, there's, there's in the Bible there are rules on how to treat your no. slaves and for slaves to obey their masters. Yes, not exactly the pinnacle of logic in the book. Right, the Exodus, yeah, the freeing of slaves. But also, there's in fucking uh, thirty pages down the road, there's well, slaves, you you know, be a good slave and obey your masters, and also like don't hit them across the fucking thing uh, with the right the side of the stick on a Thursday after the yeah. sun goes down. Cause that's fucked up. Right. But anyways, the rest of the week, do whatever you want. Well, yeah. And of course, you know, the book it's is, a book of its time. The book is also manipulated by 
whatever Roman emperor had it at the time. So it's, you know. It's a fucking book. It's a, an ongoing political document more than anything. It's a living, breathing document, as they say. It's dead. Yes. It's dead. It's a book. And, uh, you it. know, so, so around this time, um, a group of soldiers are sent through, like, a, a Baltimore, as, as the sides are. He goes, Lincoln calls, he says, Virginia, you're part of the Union, you know, uh, join us. And then Virginia votes against it. And so as all this is happening, soldiers are, uh, you know, each side is mass- amassing their forces. And uh, Baltimore and Maryland is, um, you know, 50-50. Yeah, they burned, burned effigies of, of Lincoln. And yeah, and then there's a group of soldiers that go is it through there, and there's a fight, and I think some people get shot. And Elizabeth writes, she, she writes, she was walking home with a friend, and she said, I could scarcely, scarcely walk for the bitter, blinding tears. My country, oh my country. And she saw this group of, of, of this mob of people just, w- w- she said, red anger in their eyes. And she, she said, I thought of France, and, and as the procession passed, I fell upon my knees under the angry heavens, clasped my hands, and prayed, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And so as, as all this is happening, you know, Richmond is ripe for rumor. Everybody is, there's a lot of excitement going on. And Elizabeth and her mother, uh, they realize they have, to, they have to be careful. Because at one point, um, uh, the other rich women that they associate with asked them to help make shirts for the Confederate soldiers. Oh. And Elizabeth and her mother said, no, fuck that. And so there was this backlash. And so immediately after the backlash, they realized, okay, sh- okay. So they went, then the, sol- the Confederate soldiers had now come into the city in preparation of, uh, of war. And so instead, Elizabeth and her mother then went to, they brought books and flowers to the soldiers, so- soldiers station in the city in order to be like, okay, you know, we're doing, we're not going to make shirts, but we'll do it. Right, 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 right. Read that. Here's some flowers. Here's yeah. a book. Yeah, here's a book. It's Uncle Tom's <laughs> Cabin. How many of you soldiers actually own <laughs> slaves? None. None of you. No, and, and, cool. And, and, and how and many she, you can read? She <laughs> notes, she, you know, she feels bad for so many of these guys because she's like, they're just little, they're fighting for they're little dummies. They don't know what they're they're even fighting for. You know, and, and there's they, they, you know, Elizabeth. She, I gotta tell you, I don't know what I'm doing. You know, they're here. fighting for the psychological wage of being white. Well, and the and pay. Le- well, of course, yes. The actual wage of, yes. A lot of them, of a lot of them. She thought they don't actually have a real opinion. You know, they're just like this. Yeah. This, this um. They got it's it's poor white dudes getting yeah. tricked. Yeah. To fight for a thing that they have no juice in. So this all builds up, and then July twenty first, eighteen. 18- but also fuck them. For the record, fuck them too. July twenty first, eighteen sixty one. Uh, the first bull run. And it's a silly time. It's a very, you know, it's like, I, I think we've talked about it. I think we talked about it during um, uh, Corbett. Um, the first bill run is just no one involved, with the exception of some of the officers, has ever been involved in a battle <laughs> and has any idea what's going on mm. to the point where the residents of D.C., Get in their wagons and they oh, get and they their picnic, yeah, basket, yeah, yeah. Back, uh, b- picnic baskets and go out there and expect a grand old time. And then the South overruns the North and all these idiots have to <laughs> flee back to the city. <laughs> but Richmond itself, get the fucking basket! You know, no one planned that after a battle you take prisoners. And so the city itself was not prepared for. DC? No, the Richmond was not oh. prepared for to take in prisoners. And so they had, to, they had to start converting houses into hospitals and factories into prisons. And so, like, all of these houses in Richmond became hospitals for Confederate soldiers. Mm. And all of these factories started becoming prisons and hospitals for Union soldiers. Huh. And Elizabeth is seeing that, you know, the Union soldiers are being treated terribly. So she goes to one commander... And he's like, nah, you can't go see him. So she goes to another commander, a guy over his head, and she says, man, you have some beautiful white hair. Look at you. You're so distinguished. And she said, I want to talk to these soldiers, you know, because I'm a Christian woman. And, I'm, you know, I'm a lady. It's my duty to help people. And he's like, okay. Okay, you're right. You're a Why, si- thank you, sweetheart. You're a silly lady. I get it. You want to help people. What threat could you possibly pose? And he gives her she, he gives her a note of permission to bring, quote, books, luxuries, delicacies, and, and, and whatever. Delicacies. And so her mother and her, they bring soup and gruel to... Delicacies. To the soldiers. According to one oh, soldier. Oh, like gruel? Like cornmeal <laughs> gruel. It's like, you know, it's better than... 
the fucking dirt they were eating. According to one soldier, all the lint and bandages supplied to Union prisoners at this time would be from the Unionists in Richmond. Mm. Mm. And, you know, from their kindness, it often came warnings from people of like, you know, I'll fucking, you know, watch out. People are watching you. Hmm. Um, you with your delicacies. And even the Richmond Inquirer in July 29, 1861 writes, two ladies, a mother and a daughter living on Church Hill have lately attracted public notice by their insidious, assiduous, assiduous a- a- attentions to the Yankee prisoners confined in the city. Whilst every true woman in this community has been busy making articles of comfort or necessity for our troops, mm-hmm. these two women have been expanding their opulent means and aiding and giving comfort to the miscreants who have invaded our sacred mm-hmm. soil, bent on <laughs> raping and murder, the desolation of our homes and sacred places, and the ruin of dishonor to our families. And the audacity of trying to stop us from keeping other human beings as chattel, yes. slavery, and bondage. Yes. How Dare they, <laughs> you hosses. <laughs> so he's like, I'm just trying to get back to New Brunswick. I, I don't care. There's nothing. I'm like doing could, that does anybody here know how to dig a fucking tunnel Yo, under the ground? Bro, and just go straight. <laughs> this Southern Belle come sees me. She loves me, bro. <laughs> it's like fucking Florence Nightingale oh and God. shit. The mom comes in. The mom is stacked. And she goes, it's just like Paul. <laughs> I think it's I'm Paul. <laughs> and my brother's Peter. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> so so you know, you know, as this as this newspaper writes it and, and other people other newspapers would go on to write, the the unionism of these two women only reinforced the danger of female anatomy. Here's a here's a widow and a spinster who haven't been conquered by men. And they're mm. because Oh, it's burning at the stake time. Because they... Well, because, the widow's been conquered by man. No, but now she's free to be, well, you know, the, she, to be autonomous. And look what happens when you let ladies be autonomous. Now they're caring oh, for people. Yeah. God. How God damn them. <laughs> See what happens when you let these women run amok? Yes. <laughs> Bandaging <laughs> injured yes. people and feeding them. <laughs> they off there taking care of them Jersey boys. They should be here sucking our dicks. God damn it. God damn it. So, oh, yeah. So they had, to, they had to, you know, be careful, not just because of violence or arrest against them, but also... Suspicion. In August uh, of 61, the Confederate Congress passed the Alien Enemies Act, which allowed the Congress, which allowed officials to seize any property from unionists. So if you were deemed a unionist... I mean, we don't have that law today, thankfully. Lights out, there's, sugar. There's no, a forfeiture. There's no issue with cops just taking shit from yeah. people and mm. never return. How so, the hell did they get that margarita machine? They took it. <laughs> so True in, story. In Richmond alone, just from this law, in Richmond alone, over $500,000 worth of property was seized. It's about $15 million today. Mm. And uh, so after this, you know, w- w- when this backlash is coming and this, this article is printed, Elizabeth uh, and her mother, they start visiting Confederate soldiers in the hospitals, too. <laughs> and she starts sending her. So instead of her going to the prisons, she starts sending her slaves to the prisons to bring food and clothing to the Union prisoners. Oh, huh, all right. because. Oh, yeah. Well, it's like, ah, I don't want to. No, it, just, it, it's, be, it's... I get it. I get yeah. it. I just don't want to, like, ah, send them to any place where they could be locked up. Well, sure, sure. But because they're her... They are her they're her, pro- they're her yeah. property. Yeah. She has the benefit it's, it, of that, having that, that legal same, claim That to same them. instinct that is letting her move under the law because it's assumed that she's, you know, some dumb woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That same idea is letting these slaves go into right. these prisons. No, who would suspect why property? Would, why would a slave bring something good to a soldier? Slaves yeah. are idiots. Yeah. So, uh, to further guard the family, the, the Van Loos, her and her mother, also took in every night. They, would, they, they had a brief time where they took in the commander of a, a confederate, the Confederate commander's family. Gave and they had them there. Food. They had them living at the house. And no shit. Her mom, uh, after this, her mom would stay home and not do any missions. Eliza would just stay home and turn the house of a, into a refuge for mm. wounded and hungry Confederate soldiers. Mm. Mm. And they'd be like, I'm a lifelong bigot, you know. I, uh, <laughs> yes. I, swear, I don't have any empathy at all. <laughs> Is that shit all right with you, miss? 
By the way, this gruel's great. (laughs) And her brother would uh, do his part by, you know, acting as the elite man of the Van Loos and, 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 you know, talking with businessmen and being... Now, was he a uh, uh, confirmed bachelor? (laughs) No, no. He would, um, I believe he would, I can't, I don't remember most of his story, but I believe he would eventually find a family. But during this time. Find a family. Find a family to pretend to be (laughs) his. During this time. (laughs) Or he would go out on weeknights. Oh, my name ain't Hillary. (laughs) 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 Also, when I go out on weekends, my name is (laughs) Hillary. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He would just, you know, do his part to, you know, talk to the right people and make the family seem on the up and up. And my dad, that is one fine looking boy you are raising. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's doing just fine. You call me up when you uh, grow up. So uh, this continues in March of 62. Now we're, in, we're a little over uh, about a year into it or so. Into what? Into the, into the war. The, the Great War. The conflict. No, no, the, 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 the war, the brother against brother war. Yeah. The mm-hmm. greys against the blues. You know, the first bull run is, is uh, July 21st, 18, uh, 1861. So now March 1862, um, Richmond again. Oh, but you just say real quick for people to know what a, what bull run is, the first bull, bull run. I don't know what it is. No, that's what I was talking about with the picnic. and. So it's an incursion into the north from the south. Right. So the south goes in with the idea of, hey, fuck it, maybe maybe we could see a little. What if if we get near D.C.? I mean, and I think they got to something like 13 miles. Huh. I'm already house. cold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit, I got tear gas. Let's go home. <laughs> I think we're And I don't, I don't, I can't remember if Lee is in charge then. If he's not in charge then, he's in charge shortly after. Mm. Because Lee was on the fence of, should I join? But and the then, legislature chose the South. Right. And then and, he did. And also, Lee was a vicious slave owner and broke up families on purpose. Get he the was, fuck out, really? Yes. He was like Whoa. Stephen Miller, yes. man. Gen- generally was not it's Jewish. Uh, this is a thing that Ken Burns makes mistake in, with in, in his documentary presenting Lee as this, and I think Shelby Foote has a hand in it to talk about what a gallant man he is. But well, just because no, he's s- s- southern, generally purposely broke up his slaves, had them whipped. He was very br- brutal, Jesus, to his slaves. Um, and I think it's very fitting. One of the best parts of the war was turning. His Arlington, house, yeah. Yeah. Arlington yeah. into. And he was, at that time, considered the <laughs> that best. That is an expert. The best general in the country. Yes, absolutely. And yeah, Lincoln was desperate. Lincoln was, uh, Lincoln, there was. Now, do you know at all um, how much of the the state voting for secession was maybe based on the inkling of where Lee would go? Well, probably some of for, it. For, but, you in the state of Virginia? But that yes. is, it's never mentioned with all of the talks and uh, that Varen. Uh, brings up with Van Lu Elizabeth talking with all of these politicians. Mm. It's never brought up. Uh, uh, you know, Richmond is a, it's a slave city. Yeah. All of these places in Virginia are, you know, there's you know West Virginia is created because they don't want to be a part. You yeah. know, West, West right. Virginia just secedes from the secessionists. But um, wow, that is now, fucking. That is knowing it's, what it's, you know and you know, how it's, the it's, turns it's, it's the table. The, it's the weirdest that is thing. So it's so fucking wild, yeah. man. So West Virginia. Mm-hmm. The guys with the banjos, and they're like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know about all that. And then they go like, Well, uh, I'm a slave to the moonshine, and I can tell you it ain't pretty. <laughs> I'm, I ain't for it. It's also fascinating too, with you know the thing of uh, of uh, to the shine, uh, Virginia, um, with Washington, you know, talking to Adams and and saying like, you know, Virginia is with Massachusetts. Versus the British, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. because to him, you know, to Adams, that was like a fucking world away. He was mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, really? Yeah. Virginia? Thank you. Oh, yeah. you know? I mean, go back to our pedestrian uh, pedestrianism episode to just like the distance. Yeah. <laughs> it was, Everything was so far. It was so Everything far. is far. As I mentioned before, Emily Dickinson had <laughs> she was <laughs> she, she she was had homesickness and she was like three miles away. Yeah. Dude, three miles fucking. Especially in Western Man. Might as well be on the moon. So where was it? So in Richmond in, in March of 1862, there's a growing fear of unionists in the cities. Uh, so the Confederates, uh, the, the, the Confederates in the city, they round up all of these people they suspect of being un- unionists. And it, it's mostly working class uh, people 
Um, you know, the elites. Yeah. <laughs> and but there's also some, you know, it, John likes it. <laughs> I mean, it, they would be in this case. And all so all of these people, What do you think you're better than us cuz you don't think that you're better than blacks? What? The thing reminds me of Michael Ian Black talking about he goes the, the white he goes you might notice the white power crowd they tend to be the disenfranchised whites the ones without the power right. so who do they blame the rich and the powerful in other words blacks and hispanics <laughs> <laughs> he's like because that's his really running shit here the kobe bryans <laughs> yes exactly he has eric estrada grinding his heel eric into, the throat, eric estrada. into the throat of the white man <laughs> oh, because because he was a chip it's so stupid it's so fun but it is it's that logic yeah where you go like you know i think this Fucking mechanic well, again, or blacksmith again. That's is, why they're like Elizabeth and her family, like for a long time. You know, it's just uh, well, they're look at they're rich. Why would they? Yeah, they're hide, they're hiding behind the veil of, of of wealth. Yeah, and they're like, well, they can't be the fine people. Look at them. They have stuff. Look at them. Mom. They're rich. They must be good. Exactly. They also spinsters though, which like, is weird. I like a spin. <laughs> The fucking she so, ain't had no suitors. So so when they the 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 great part about this arrest is that there's not they don't actually find anything to prove on these people, but by making this arrest, they introduce all of the unionists to each to other. Each other. <laughs> all of yes. these people who did yes. who did who didn't have the ability to like ask like uh, hey uh, what do you think about the they, they, it's they a great networking opportunity. <laughs> That's exactly no. what it or, became. Or, or or a training camp. Yes. Or yeah. a, a union. Oh, wow! Yeah, that's what they say. Like you know, if you're if you're a uh, you know if you, <laughs> I think it was in the movie Blow. Like I went into jail. I went into prison for like selling some weed. I came out a fucking expert right, and had to right. fucking smuggle cocaine. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If, like if someone said that about robbing banks too. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Was, yeah. Um, yeah. Like I went into. Yeah, I had to go to jail to become a criminal. <laughs> uh, so what this does, all of a sudden, Elizabeth, you know, knows. One of these people, and from this, which people? One of the one of the people that was arrested, okay. and so from this and this arrest, suddenly, her network has grown. Just knowing, oh fuck, okay, we got this person, we got this person, we got this person. Now we can expand our operation. Yeah, and they've all went through something together too. Well, that too, yeah. So but now, also now it's like trial by fire. They got a fucking bonding experience, and especially because her social level was higher than almost all, all of theirs. Oh, so now, she now she has access to a working class unionist level. Yeah. You know, so, so it gives her, it gives her, it gives her two different things. She Ac read access to more people, but also access to like, you know, if she goes to some poor guy's house, everybody in town's going to notice. Mm. But if, if, if someone, if a poor guy comes to her house and then goes to a poor guy's house, right. no one's going to give shit. Right. Insulated. Uh, and yet, you know, the the huh. the fear, the the specter of seizure and 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 death was 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 still always near. Hmm. In April of 1862, Timothy Webster, he was a Pinkerton agent who had uh, the Pinkertons uh, became like the CIA basically during the yep. the Civil War. Fucking piece. But then they later would be the FBI. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Man, these guys are good. <laughs> And uh, what they did, they worked for the union, and they infiltrated, and they, um, you know, they had they they formed a spy network, and so they had a mm -hmm. guy, this guy Timothy Webster, he infiltrated this uh, southern group in Baltimore, mm -hmm. and then uh, through that he followed that down to Richmond, and he became is like a real it was like a real embarrassing thing of the confederacy confederacy because he had befriended all of these officers who like gave him papers and like all kinds of shit. It was a neo-nazi hot tub party. Yes, exactly. But then he was caught and him and his like quote unquote wife they thought was his wife, but it was actually another Pinkerton agent, Hattie Lawson. And uh, the the papers called her a dirty prostitute. Um anyway, Webster Webster is caught um and he is hung 
as a spy. Hanged? The, 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 hanged as a spy. Yeah, he was he's hung, hung and he's hanged. No uh, way. He's the uh, the first spy hanged since in the United <laughs> States since the revolution. Well, 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 him with his own Johnson. <laughs> well, and they had to hang him twice because the first time... <laughs> the dick was so long. <laughs> yeah, the first, his feet touched the ground. <laughs> it's like the he's, long arm of the it law. <laughs> <laughs> it was more like the long dong of the law. And he was cut. <laughs> I th- I God only knows how long that thing ran on for. I think I think his last words were something like, "It feels good." Because <laughs> <laughs> they they tied up. Oh, here it is. I turned right to it. I'm about to buzz. I'm a buzz. So so they 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 go to they go to hang him. Um, and the trap. <laughs> The, tra- the trap door springs, but the the rope slips off his neck, and he just falls <laughs> through the door. And so as as the I just <laughs> I just slick it up a bit. <laughs> Too much lube, I'm afraid. Do you and have so, any idea uh, what you're doing? Was this news made by slaves at all? <laughs> <laughs> so they, they bring him back up. This they, is comfy. <laughs> <laughs> well, they well they re rig the rope, and he uh. goes he goes I suffer a double death, and then he goes Oh, you're gonna choke me this time. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so they just fucking choke him with the rope instead of Whoa. breaking his neck. Instead of breaking his neck. Oh, that sucks. Oh, oh shit! I see what's gonna happen. Oh my god! I better bust. <laughs> and then, and then all like all, all the guys who did it, they then cut up the rope and pocketed it because you know, <laughs> you want to show people later. Ah, this fucking thing killed the guy. Yikes! And so you know, but then right after that, May eighteen sixty two, there's hope. McClellan, uh, infamous idiot. I spent he spent <laughs> spent his yeah, entire yeah. time in charge training his troops in order to never fight a battle like to because he doesn't want to fight a battle he's yeah, just what, training him training what, him what training him. It's no. man, he's and, and Lincoln writes to him he's like if you're if you know something to the effect of if you're if you're done with my troops I would like to use them now or something like that yeah and one of the troops said uh, before crossing a river he wanted to know the temperature yes yes and how deep it was yes. and all this like anything to avoid fighting yes it was um, smart. <laughs> but also, you know, it, the weirdest thing of in a, we yeah. have all of the population, yeah. we have all the wealth. Yeah. yeah, I mean, the difference between what Grant did and what he did is Grant said, "We have the numbers. Go, let's do this." Right, and then there's a difference between a good decision and the right decision with the with, in the amount of time. You can take all the time in the world to make the fucking right decision down the decision tree, but sometimes you just have to make the best decision in the quickest that, amount of time. Or, or even the wrong decision is better than indecision. That's right. So, uh, but, you know, McClellan eventually decided to march, and uh, uh, um, by May of 1862, he was... He drowned and froze to death in the river. <laughs> by, take a stroll, boys. By May of 62, he had finally moved his army, and now he, he was five miles away from Richmond. And so Lifetime. Elizabeth and her mother, the Van Loos, they prepared a room in the house for him because they're like, okay, he's going to take the city. You know, let's show him a good time. And, uh, and then, of course, he doesn't. No. He fights one battle and he skedaddles, I believe. I'm so done. I, I, I have to go back to D.C. This is a nightmare. And uh, then Elizabeth hears from a captain friend of hers that her name has been reported to officials as, you know, someone to watch. Mm. And after hearing this, her and her mother, again, they go out, they, they bring soldiers in, they bring in soldiers and city folk. They, had, they, they even, some guy knocks on their door and they give him a luncheon and serve him tea, even though they're pretty sure he was sent to entrap him. And Elizabeth writes, she, she writes, quote, we have to be watchful and circumspect. Why is his serpents and harmless as doves for truly the lions are seeking to devour us? Mm-hmm. You know, very biblical thing there. Quite. And... Again, so they do this, here's, here's us being good. Here's us being good. And then she goes out and... She be bad. <laughs> and uh, June 26th, there's this battle at Mechanicsville. Mechanicsville? Uh, Mechanicsville is a, a, a nearby <laughs> uh, city. What do they do there? <laughs> yeah. Brilliant naming. Dance. <laughs> <laughs> right on. And uh, during this time, she goes out and... Um, she goes, she, she, in like a, a miniature disguise, like, you know, she takes a wagon, she goes out and she visits this guy, uh, 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 Botts, who was, uh, in the legislature. He was a, he was a former Whig who was run out of office for not being a secessionist. And she goes and visits him. She goes through the lines and says, she's got a wig on. <laughs> it's, a mini- <laughs> yes. it's a miniature wig. Like you said. Right. She's got a Hitler mustache. 
She's actually dressed up as three dwarves in a trench coat. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, the fucking avant-garde shit. And so, so as, as, that was McClellan fighting in Mechanicsville. And so she meets Botts, his, you know, this politician she had admired for his like unionist stances. Mm. And she meets him out there. And through him, now she adds to her circle elites that she didn't, she couldn't, that, you know, it was too dangerous <clears throat> to meet before. Right. So now she's got the working class. Now she's got elites in her circle. And I got everybody. I'm talking the wealthy mechanics, <laughs> slaves, dancers. I got them all. Yeah. <laughs> You're not one of those beatniks, are you, bots? <laughs> <laughs> I certainly won't tolerate any of this Bolshevik <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. And uh, so she, she expands her, her network uh, to, let me see if I can do this correctly. There we go. So this is from uh, 2014 Richmond uh, newspaper. I forget which one. Richmond Inquirer, maybe? Uh, so this is just a list of the, some of the guys that who were, were Richmond unionists that she worked with. Fellas. R Robert Ford, Fellas. a northern free black man who served as a teamster for the Union Army. Uh he was, he was captured in the Shenandoah Valley in 1862, was sent to Richmond to work for the warden at Libby Prison, where he escaped, where he helped several, several prisoners escape. He was whipped after the prison break, severely. Uh, Frederick Lohman and the Lohman brothers, pro-Union German immigrants who helped Richmonders reach Union lines and aided the reburial. And so so there were, uh, you know, there were, there were a lot of guys on the outskirts of the city, and they went someone, you know, part of this network, they would be sent to one of their houses, and it was their job to get them through the centuries and the people on the right. roads. Right. John Minor Botts, this uh, a lawyer, former member of the U.S. House of Representatives. He was in prison in 1862 for his pro-union views, and he lived outside of town on his farm. Charles Palmer, a commission and, sh and shipping merchant whose wealth helped fund the union underground. Uh, he was also arrested in 62 on charges of disloyalty. And Samuel Ruth, a superintendent of the Richmond, Fredericksburg, and Potomac Railroad. And what he would do is when the Confederates were they needed troops or supplies, he would slow his trains down. Oh. So, you know, there's, you know, every group needs uh, the guy who busts the safe and the guy who does the computers yeah. and the guy, you know. Sure. Yeah, you need a... Uh, Putting together a team. <laughs> yes. We're getting the, we're Son getting, of a bitch. We're getting the crew back together. <laughs> yeah. We need the Chinese guy who is a gymnast. <laughs> it's the old there. gang. I'm the... Well, you need the a Bernie Mac. I'm the undercover Southern Bell. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, so even Varen writes, there's distinct categories of the unionists. There's the former Whigs of the slaveholding class who would bankroll the operations. Men of the commercial laboring classes, predominantly non-slave holders or immigrants of northern background, who would, bear, Germans? who would bear the brunt of the physical dangers and That's risks. Right. But there's uh, a couple of German brothers. <laughs> and men in both, and you know... Beat me, it, piss on me. And mm -hmm. as she points out, these men were, you know, they were f husbands and fathers. And, um, and among, w w the largest group among all of these men were blacks. Mm. There was so many blacks that worked with Van Lu that did the quietest work in the city mm -hmm. of bringing this little thing here. You know, saying, hey, coming out of the shadows and going, hey, no, you're supposed so to So even way. the unionists... We're benefiting by the yes, yes, exploitation of black labor. No, no not exploitation. Uh, I think we're talking there, but a little bit more not about a, a, a uh, insurrectionist Sorry. conspiracy. Sorry, you fucking asshole. You just want, let them do all the hard work. You just huh? want the black yeah. dude to be real fucking woke, lady. <laughs> you want uh, the let black them dude do all the hard work out there. You want the black dude to be filing his eyes, going like, I don't know where you're supposed to go. <laughs> am yeah, I get, am I getting paid? <laughs> <laughs> I want him. Good for you, man. Yeah, man. I like it. Mm hmm Right on. I want, I want him riding two merry-go-rounds. <laughs> Carousels, whatever, man. <laughs> I'm woke. Whichever fucking... The directions I don't even know they could go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, they, man, got him, I, they got him doing all the fucking work. Yeah. I got to show you guys. So, um, now this new network was also a matter of necessity because after those late June and early battles around Richmond that the South won. Now there were more than 5,000 prisoners housed in the city. The 1860s census, the city population was almost 38,000. And, and 5,000 5, of prisoners. them are prisoners? Oh, God almighty. 
Union prisoners. Yeah. In oh boy, it's just a couple of guys. And they're like fucking... in a, they're in like a fucking uh, cotton gin factory or something. Yeah. So so they're originally I um if you, you spinning Jenny. You guys want to uh, I don't know. Give me a second to, or something. I got to go get my map. Okay. All right. Well, get I the, love maps. Get the fucking map. Okay. Uh, so there's these poor guys from Buffalo. They're G- Jesus fucking Christ. I got to get the fuck. I got to get out of here. You know, I thought that was fucking. I thought I was a fucking southerner I'm from freezing fucking my Canada. fucking balls off of here. Jesus fucking fucking, let's go down south and roast and pack your coat. It's fucking pecan pie every fucking day. Jesus fucking Christ. I'm putting on fucking love handles like. <laughs> hmm? So Matt's going to get a map. That's one. Yeah, of the, what's the, he going to show us? That's one of the weirdest things that's ever happened in the history of the show. Yeah, I'll be back with my maps. Yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I love a visual aid. Yeah, he's gonna be like, now this is how the country should be divvied uh, up. <laughs> I got this from the Turner Diaries. <laughs> now, if you see here, the race traders are heavily concentrated in the Southern California mm-hmm. area. Mm-hmm. That's where we attack first. Yeah, we didn't. Uh, we didn't say. I think since the Capitol riots, the uh, oh, dude, the, the 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 drawing on the Turner Diaries. Yeah, yeah, which we handled in a mm-hmm. media episode. That's right. Um, yeah, part part the part of something part of the Turner Diaries uh, climax or endgame scenario climax climax um, clima X <laughs> it's not gender neutral yeah uh, dealt with surrounding the capital as one of like the kind of like um, uh, oh yeah killing I mean, strokes there's a shit in the fucking in the Turner Diaries it's, it's just- so. Ridiculous, like, endlessly uh, insane. Yeah, and then we nuke. They think, like, oh yeah, we nuke uh, LA, yeah. but then, like, and then uh, the good Jews part, go over here. Yeah, and the part of the narrative is that like they just discover that all the while the black people are like underground cannibals. It's so fucking racist and insane, and uh, you know, it, but it makes them the heroes. Uh, it's fuck. It's diabolically just nuts. Um. And it's uh, it's you know, uh, a blueprint for you know the the rural radicals, uh, you know. Well, the- yeah, I mean, like, if like the thing that you identify with most is the thing that you have least control over in your life, i.e., your fucking skin color, pick up a fucking hobby and find somebody else who's into that. Like, yeah, it's the same people are obsessed with their fucking bloodline. Like, you had nothing to do with that. Yes. And, and and to some extent too, that is kind of their attitude towards go this, fucking place this, this opinion of tyrannical government and stuff. You go like, listen, I mean, fucking dude, if it like if it was that tyrannical, you guys you wouldn't be able to write the book. You wouldn't have been able to get away with anything you did after the Civil War. It would your been, whole thing is government is inept. It would have been, now are they maniacal, <laughs> tyrannical, and have their fingers and, and tendrils into every aspect of society, or are they inept and not good in any? Yeah, is it is it make bu- a decision bureaucratic and ineffective and all that shit, or is it this diabolical deep state fucking uh, you know blood drinking conspiracy nonsense? Yeah. Matt, do you mind if I uh, take a break real quick? I, oh no, I, I, could, I would love to. I mind that you didn't bring it up. Yeah, we should have taken a break that whole time, man. <laughs> Well, I just uh, didn't think of it. <laughs> no, I hadn't talked to you in a minute. <laughs> you know what? I love talking to me, too. I do. I and do. the viewers at home and listeners at home. You're adorable. You're and adorable. the countless thousands around the... <laughs> the internet. The globe. Mm. All you Turner heads out there. Oh, Everybody boy. listening on the CB. Got that. Dial in. <laughs> oh, we had a whole thing about the I Turner know, guys. I heard. Well, just take us to break, will you? We ya? call them head turners. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, we, gotta, we turn them and we burn them. <laughs> no, we'll be right back, folks. Uh, don't read the turn drivers. And we're back. Let's do it. Oh, Better gotta, than ever. So I want to show you guys this map. So, originally, the soldiers were held in what was the slave jail. And... Uh, eventually they couldn't fit in that. And in 1861, uh, Libby Prison was, you know, so Richmond, they bought these factories to turn into jails. Bought? They yeah. didn't just seize them? No, I mean, I'm sure the guy who owned them was friends with someone right, who right. was like, hey, we'll pay you Cronation. tons of money. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So so this is a, a picture of, I hope I remember to do this for the, uh, back from break, I should remember now, uh, for the YouTubes. But so here's a picture of Richmond during the Civil War, and I've circled 
where the prisons were. So in 1861, Libby Prison, it's a hospital and a prison. 1862, they convert it to a prison just for officers. And in 1862, they also make Castle Thunder, which is also a prison. Whoa. And is it the fun prison? <laughs> it's no. Uh, the it's slave the slave jail, I believe, is then called Castle Godwin. And also in 1862, they have so many prisoners. They have an island called Bell Island in the middle of James River, which runs by Richmond. And they convert that whole area into a prison island. So Whoa. here's kind of the map of it, right? Okay. So you I see, see this, the island, yeah. So here's Libby Prison. Got it. Mm-hmm. And she and the Van Loos live six all, blocks from there. From all the, the that's from three. There's three prisons and right, right right across. So the, so they live in the perfect place to five minute walk. Yeah, to all of these prisons. Ten. If you're a pro pedestrian, three and a half. <laughs> yeah. You all hopped up on beef bullion cubes. <laughs> Essence of stock. Mm. Could walk that in half a second. Now, you know, the men who run these prisons generally, uh, not all of them, but generally, a lot of them, uh, men of depravity. And of course. Yeah. yeah so we could. Uh, there's a, there, you know, there's no a story of, you know, they, everybody who ran the prison seemed to be a terrible person, even though she was able to sweet talk some of them. Yeah. Because, you know, they're also. Because they're that. thinking about depraved shit. But there's one uh, who was secretly dubbed Antichrist. And there was a, a black woman not realizing this was like an inside joke. No. She's no. walking down the street, uh, she, and she says, you know, just thinking that it's normal, she says, hello, Mr. Antichrist. And then he starts to just beat her with a club. Oh, God. And as he's beating her, she's crying out, oh, please, Mr. Antichrist, don't beat me. What have I done, Mr. Antichrist? With... <laughs> Because she, she didn't realize yeah. that she's still, yeah. and this is, it's just, it's bad. And so there's, there's plenty of stories of, of prisoners just being beaten. And, but for the most part, <laughs> most of the anger seemed to be taken out on the blacks who worked at the prison. Yeah, no Good sure. God almighty. So the guys running the prison, of course, they would beat, you know, whoever they wanted. But whenever they, uh, yeah, wanted, whenever they really wanted to beat someone, they could, you know, because if you beat the union prisoner, and the union hears about it. But yeah. if you beat, All right? Yeah, nobody's gonna. Right. What a fucking nightmare. So eventually, Elizabeth isn't, you know, she's not a, with, with this with this growth of prisoners. The stronger measures are taken to one beat the prisoners, but also to for security. And Elizabeth isn't allowed to enter Li- Libby prison anymore. So instead, she starts talking with surgeons and doctors, and she gets them to start bringing prisoners to the hospital. And when they get to the hospital, then she meets with them and she, she gives them food and, you know, clothing. And, uh, and she starts using her slaves to, you know, leave a note in it saying, you know, here's a note letting you know that there are people here who are looking out for you. Maybe next time you see this person, mm. you, maybe we left a question for you. Next time you see them, you answer the question. Right. right? The and North be, remembers. <laughs> yes. Uh, at one at one point, she was asked to stop because uh, quote decent food had or decent food had quote tendency to subvert the consistency of prison rules and discipline. Oh, the now you see what's happening here is when uh, their bellies get full and they're not depleted of nutrients, the they, gru- they tend to act a little uppity. If it's anything yeah. above yeah. gruel. Uh, now, see, gruel rhymes with cruel, and that's what we aim for here at <laughs> yes, Libby Prison. Yeah. We have standards <laughs> exactly. and practices that we uh, try our damnedest to adhere to. Trying to, to do is uh, uh, you know, the finest sadism. Only the best. So, um, you know, so All eventually, discipline you, you know, she, she, the more this happens, the more she realizes, okay, fine. So what she starts doing, she, um, <laughs> I guess I'll take these bacon wrapped scallops and, uh, and caviar <laughs> devil legs. I guess I'll just throw these away to the fucking. So instead, she she uh, has a reverend, this man Thomas Moore, and this man Horace Kent, who is just a businessman, and she has them go to Libby or Castle Thunder with food and clothes that she's bought. So you know she's using her, you know she's like, well I can't be there physically, so I'll use my money to be there for me. Like everyone's dad. 
And but you know, throughout all of this, they also find that one of the easiest ways to to do this is just to bribe the guards. Mm. A lot of the guards, all this cloak and dagger bullshit, just pay them off. Yeah, I don't fucking give a shit. I don't even know what I'm doing here. Thunder. That's what's going on as they're like figuring out how to bribe the guards. I mean, uh, a lot of these guards were just like, "Hey, man, I was bald. I just want, I just need money to feed my family, and I understand that you have a cause and you have a family." Yeah. Um, and just like you know, oh, I'll take some of those sweets, you know. But of course, you know, there's a guard here and there. But but Elizabeth spent so much money bribing that, guards, just uh, on just paying for stuff in general, for the food and the clothing and bribery and mm. you know whatever people needed for mm. to to whatever this this the union network needed the unionist network needed that so in 1860 the family estate was worth $37,000 by 1870 it was worth 15 for the love of god they had sold property or buildings or whatever they needed just to yeah. make sure they still had enough money this is still what not twenty million dollars of today's money yeah i forgot yeah. to look that up but it's still it's still a chunk it's, of change you know it's a chunk of change you know it's nice yeah by today's standards, hey. they ever think about just making clothes to somebody and putting him like in a Confederate uniform? Like, what the hell am I doing in here? I'm a, uh, fighting for the Southern Republic. <laughs> That's been a grave oh, mistake. Man. I hate the colors. Well, Come on, let me out. No, sometimes no. Uh, there were definitely people who were in there um, just you know it was convenient. You know, uh, what was convenient? Well, you know, a, oh. a neighbor might tell on someone. You know. Mm. And and, and <laughs> if they snuck in Confederate uniform <laughs> and then they all just dress like <laughs> well, I shouldn't be here. Oh, he shouldn't be here. Well, what Look am I this. doing here? We're He's just, dressed like us. Oh, oh, got got stuck in here. And everything I don't yeah. understand. There could be no possible explanation other than a, a case of mistaken identity. <laughs> you know, one, one prisoner, John F. Hill, he escaped and he noted he 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 wrote that many guards were sympathetic and he 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 estimated that a third of guards were Union men dragged into the Confederate. Uh, oh, and like they're in drag. <laughs> yes, nice. Um, he's a, he was a, a, you know apparently a minority in that thinking, and uh, uh, the the joke was that a lot of these guys were Confederates because of quote blind cupidity. Cupidity? Yes. What does that mean? And so instead of stupidity, it was you know dumb love. You know, dumb uh, love with for what? what? For, for the South. No. <laughs> I yeah. got into this hey, you know, hey, hey, I don't know how jokes work back yeah, then. Yeah, Cupid's arrow shot me right <laughs> in the heart, and I just <laughs> fell in love with Dixie. Yeah. So she's she's a cruel she's mistress. Really? Yeah. Something. Yeah. I couldn't imagine if I was a colored folk. I just want to make sure there was a joke in this episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> we have trouble with that. <laughs> so so uh, Van Lu then she takes another step and she convinces a nephew of one of the men she worked with, Franklin Stearns, she convinces his nephew, Erasmus Ross, to get a job as a clerk in the prison. And one of his jobs as clerk was roll call. And so there's the story of this escaped prisoner named Willi William Lounsbury. And William Lounsbury tells the story of how one day at roll call, uh, Erasmus Ross punched him in the stomach and says, you yellow-bellied Yankee, come down to my office, I have a matter to settle with you. Everybody noted that Ross was a real fucking pain in the ass and son of a bitch. Mm. So Lounsbury gets in the office. Ross, without saying a word, motions to some uh, clothes in the corner. Mm. Lounsbury puts on the clothes, walks out, mm -hmm. and he and yeah. leaves. Yeah. Full, full drag. <laughs> and he's hot. Yeah. Now you hot. put those on. Now you, dad, you, but before you go, you got to dance for me. It's so good to watch you walk away. Ooh, I hate to see you leave. Mm. And as he walked out, he walks out and he crosses the street. And he's like, what the fuck do I do? And uh, a black man from Van Lu came up to him and said, you have to go follow me this way. Oh, and he she, brought him down the street, down another street, down another street to Van Lu's house where they hid him in their attic for you know a few days until everything had died down and then eventually he made his way to the northern lines wow so and that was the thing the van Lu's attic had a uh, one of those like a false wall kind of thing where they cut out a little hole in the wall and people would hide in there in case there was ever a search damn um and they were you know uh, oh i'll get to it anyway Did that like a book no it was just really it was just like it was just a, like a hole in a wall, basically. Glory hole. Yeah. And yeah, in essence. 
to freedom. Mm. I seen glory. Uh, <laughs> Matthew Broderick. That's right. Denzel. Uh, now, which one six? And, and, and so you know, among this group, there's there's so many unnamed black servants who who helped. Um, William Brisby was a free black farmer, and he helped over a hundred men cross you, the lines to. to Damn. Um, and so there was just this this network of people they trusted, and you know, like Elizabeth being a woman, and like these men being black, they're below suspicion. Yes. They're not smart enough to do these things. Oh, that guy doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Right. Exactly. Have you seen his turnips? Right. <laughs> Have you seen his... Yes. <laughs> Disgraceful. Look at those turnips he's wearing right Look now. like fucking parsnips. <laughs> Don't, and, yeah, there is this thing of, you know, oftentimes certain rich people are above suspicion of certain crimes, but if you are so... If you are deemed to be subhuman or lower class... You are below suspicion, and then that's like the real master. Oh, yeah, right? always, way oh, to always benefits the insurrection yes. every yeah. single time. It's I'm just, sorry, I just don't know anything. Man. Well, fucking ask him; he's a stupid ass farmer. <laughs> yeah, it's the same thing they were doing in Northern Ireland in like the fucking eighties. They'd be like, "That guy doesn't fucking know anything." You're like, "That guy knows everything." He's yeah. got nothing going on. That but guy, a farm. No that guy. That guy's. Don't, <laughs> do you understand how rural gossip goes? Yeah. Everybody's saying like lightning. Like, this you know that idiot. farmers <laughs> live and die by the motion of the stars at yeah. night. Yeah. And they know everything. In the gossip, they have an of almanac. Weather. Yeah. <laughs> farmers know everything. Yeah. They're never. They're very in tune. So in, in September twenty second, eighteen sixty two, Lincoln issues the Preliminary Emancipation Proclamation. And it says that any slaves in the state still rebelling on January 1st, 1863, shall be forever free. And as we'll see, you know, it's different. If, like a, if the union is in control of that state, there are different rules. Maryland, the state Ohio, is, I believe, yeah, they could all stay. Four slave states in the union. Yeah, four of them. I don't, I don't, I don't know all the, except I believe Ohio and Maryland. Makes sense. But they were, yeah, because he ran on just no new slaves. But the, the emancipation also Read said. Read my lips. If you if if you're not rebelling, you can. Yeah, an issue. they were saying there there are good slave states. Yeah, there is, and there is what? bad. This naughty. So so in response, I mean, there to, are degrees, I suppose. Back then, yeah, I, back I, then, I, I, argue I that out. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> so so in response to, are you saying Lincoln was wrong? <laughs> in response to this preliminary emancipation, the Richmond Enquirer calls him a savage. Which is just like this, like, oh, I would say it's a chef's kiss, but it's so embarrassing. Like, he's a savage for saying yeah. you have to free the slaves? Yeah, how do, uh, that's sav the savagery. And <laughs> the legislature... The position on a good white man business owner is savage. The Confederate legislature, which, which is housed in Richmond. Richmond is the capital of the Confederacy. Mm -hmm. Jefferson Davis's house is in Richmond. I don't stay there much. <laughs> yeah. I just know people. I think they turn it into a prison or something. <laughs> Please don't turn it into a graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to Texas, anything. It's true, no, they do tours there, and for a while... It's a fucking they... TCBY treats now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it fucking should be. That's what it fucking should be. It was, I mean, until recently, they would give tours and be like, he was really good to his slaves. He was a good... His slaves loved him. Now have a free cone. Yeah. <laughs> Look, he's fucking freaking out. He loves TCBY. I haven't heard the word TCBY. <laughs> so I've also I've never heard anyone reference. Holy it fucking shit! What is it, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> most ignominious <laughs> disgrace for uh, God uh, yeah. forbid it becomes the country's best <laughs> yogurt. <laughs> the only. Yeah. My granddaddy didn't import <laughs> slaves from fucking <laughs> <laughs> Namibia so that they could be selling the frozen custard treats out of my house. <laughs> I'll be goddamned if the good <laughs> Jefferson Davis name is besmirched by a cultured dairy frozen God treat. Damn it! But it's it's low in calories though too. I, it's got probiotics. I gotta give it up. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so in response to the emancipation, the the Confederate legislature in Richmond passes a resolution giving immunity to anybody who murders a Unionist on Confederate soil. Holy oh. shit. So that's it's like, the fucking... That's, see what that's you made me do, John? See what you made me do? 
<laughs> You're saying people have to be free? I'm saying we could just go murder. Man, I yeah. wish Lincoln was... How, how, about, how about that kind of freedom? <laughs> I wish Lincoln yeah. wasn't such a savage making me be one. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, like, see what, what you, you made me do? God damn, here I because go. Because you were giving these people the, the right to live free or die hard. Yeah. <laughs> like a Bruce Willis, I'm going to let them die hard. Here I go again on my own, I guess. <laughs> here I go. Yeah. Uh, so the, the Confederate reaction also to this also changes the prison system. Uh, Jeff Davis rules that any black soldiers captured are not treated as prisoners, but as runaway slaves. And all cap... All whoa, 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 whoa. Could you say that one more time? So any black soldiers fighting for the Union captured are not treated as oh, prisoners of war. They're treated as slaves because they're black. Yeah, and then they're going to be shipped south. Even though their last name is Freeman or something, Freedman yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you have to remember, like, you know, before the war... Uh, the Dred Scott, this, the the Fugitive Slave Act, yeah. allowed Southerners to sue mm -hmm. states if 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 their their slave bounty hunter was you know not allowed to take right. people from that state. Right. Right. Pennsylvania was sued by a slave states bounty rights. hunter. That was the kind of okay side of states' rights is that if you could get to a, a free state. Well, yes, but then Pennsylvania was sued by a slave bounty hunter because the guy was like, they're not letting me get these slaves. And the Supreme Court overturned Pennsylvania's rule no way. by no. saying, "This is you're, that's not a federal no, rule. I disagree with that. <laughs> Very brave of you. I, so wait, th but that was started by Jefferson Davis. So anyway, so back to the, the 1862. What you just said was Jefferson Davis, right? No, 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 no. That was before the Civil War. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Things weren't good. Uh, so in 1860, so, so, so Jefferson Davis's response to the emancipation is to say, one, black soldiers captured are runaway, considered slaves. runaway slaves. And two, officers captured would be punished as criminals. So in response to this, Secretary of War uh, Stanton, the Union Secretary of War, he stops prisoner exchange. And so because there's no more prisoner exchange, the Confederate prisons just... Swell. Uh, balloon yeah. insanely. And I don't think they're being treated well. Yes. They gotta dig tunnels and shit. And but also, it, it, is, it is also in the Union advantage. Straight back. It's a war of attrition. It is. And there's way more people up there. Yeah. Um, and so... And, and they're and they're, they're not... That's right way to say it. Um, they're fighting... Like definitely for a more noble cause, sure. But like you know, like we said before, the the Southern whites fighting had nothing. They were fighting for God knows what the, the right to be just not black. Sure, but we, we should also you know even Elizabeth is is wary around Unionists um, and Union soldiers. You know, not knowing well, they are men, not knowing whether Fair. they're fighting, not not necessarily. Trusting that they're fighting to free slaves, and that'll come. Right, up. Sometimes that, they're just fighting to kill people. That'll that'll come up. Oh no, but there's in, northern in racism. Of that'll course. that'll come yeah. up in a little bit. So anyway, so the the prison system in uh, Richmond just balloons. In May of 1863, 3,500 prisoners arrive. Now Bell Island, that little island, it was only supposed to hold 3,000, and they had already emptied it once just to get everybody out of there. And by 1864, now it had 8,000. When you say they emptied it. They just got, they, they either them put them in other prisons or they just let them go. Uh -huh. Swim, them boys! <laughs> yeah. Now, Libby Prison... 30 yards. Libby Prison, uh, at this point, held 4,200 men. And it was not built for that. There was 700 people in each room. And now, these are wide. These are big rooms. But there are men, literally, there are men writing that they're, they feel like they're on a slave ship yeah. because they are stacked, basically, yeah. next to each other. Well, that was in the, in the one story, the, the, the tunnel digging profile. Right. That was one of the things, too. Is they, they just had them out in the open. Yeah, in Bell Island, they're just out in the open. They're, they're just standing inside, there. And like, but, but there are men who are like, you know, there's a one hammock open because they're, they only had enough cloth for one hammock. Everybody else was sleeping on the floor. Yeah. And all of the, food, you know, northerners are sending food to these prisons and the Confederates are taking that food and swapping it for the <laughs> shitty Confederate food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, of, like, what did you expect to happen? <laughs> but it's again, boys. Yeah, exactly. Now, uh, by spring of 1863, Richmond is now having economic issues. And regular citizens are running out of food. And the Confederate army is now seizing civilian food and goods or material. If they see a horse unattended, they take it. 
And so the Van Loos have, when they when these searches go down periodically, the Van Loos take all of their horses and bring them into the house. Mm. And they're like, the horses are so good. They never make a noise. We just put straw on the floor and they just kind of hang out. They get it. Mm. Even the horses knew. Even the horses. By March 1863, a single turkey in Richmond cost $15. That's about $310 to Good Lord. For turkey. Yeah. In April, 16, uh, April 1862, there's a bread riot, which is... The, the story kind of that I'm going to cover on uh, Patreon because um, the wives of Richmond basically took all of the weapons they could find and just rioted to the governor's mansion. Right. Give me carbs or give me this. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, near the end of 1863, two Union prisoners escape. We're real sour over dough here. In- <laughs> I don't. I didn't say that. Nothing that's, happened. Okay, that's it's terrible. terrible. But again, you know, the, the, that ride itself, the, the the bread ride, is an example of why Elizabeth is able to skate so. You long. think our yeast infections are bad? <laughs> you know, a lot, a lot of people are like, man, I, why would these these stupid women are riding? What do they? How do they? They feel stuff. You know, there was uh, that same type of. Unawareness, not not seeing that people would have a voice, yeah, until they're provoked, yeah. So near the end of 1863, two Union prisoners escape. Uh, this man named Harry Catlin and uh, John R. McCullough. Uh, Catlin, I think, went by Howard sometimes. With the help of the Richmond Underground, they make their way out of the city and eventually get their way all the way to D.C. Now, when they go to D.C., uh, they stop in the office of Benjamin the Beast Butler. Now, Benjamin Butler is worthy of profile at some point. Um, he's the beast. He's the beast. He had, he had ran, and he got that nickname from the Southerners when he ran New Orleans because he was very because uh, because the the uh, I think one of the reasons because the Southern women in New Orleans uh, were being dicks and he said okay we'll treat them like men mm-hmm. if they're going to be dicks treat them like men and uh, we just also kind of open minded <laughs> give them, them rights <laughs> let them vote fine and uh, uh, yeah he had a big crackdown when he was in charge of New Orleans. And so he's, he's now, at this point, he's the head of the Department of Virginia, North Carolina. So he's the head of, like, this large swath of, of the army on the East Coast here. And these two soldiers, having gone through the underground, they tell him, they say, hey, there's this lady, Miss Van Lu. She's the one who helped us get out. And so oh. Butler reaches out, and he finds another man to reach another man to another man. And he says, I want to talk, I, I, I want to correspond with this Van Lu. And by eight, January 1864, she's now recruited as a union agent. And so she begins this new process where she starts exchanging letters with, you know, she changes her name and writes letters to her uncle. And they're just normal letters. But then when you heat them and you apply some acid to them, a whole nother letter appears. And her uncle is Uncle Sam. <laughs> yes. And now this, le- this new letter that appears doesn't make any sense. Mm. Unless you have the cipher, did was it uh, was it invisible ink made with piss? piss, piss, piss. It was basically yeah. I mean, he piss on the yeah, thing. piss on the motherfucker. I don't know. That, that's not yeah. true. But dear uncle, be. before you read this letter, <laughs> please whip out your big uncut mm. union cock and sweaty, piss, sweaty hog. Piss all over the motherfucker. Piss all over the motherfucker. Then gently mm. apply a, a, a mm. lukewarm heat from a brazier. Oh, and yes. it, it, a brazier will give the right amount of heat for to evaporate. The piss and then the ink of the true meaning of the word will then appear on the yeah, parchment. I feel like uh, you get truly yours, uh, Van Lu. I feel like you get my meaning after that. Oh, smell it. But if you don't do that, it's just like this Hello, paper smells Uncle, like piss. Hi, I, my dear. So, so she has a cipher which she uh, she carries within, locked within her watch. Cipher. And it survived through the war and survived into her papers uh, for, uh, forever, basically. Um, and here's the first dispatch she wrote to Benjamin Butler. Dear sir, it is intended to remove to Georgia very soon all the federal prisoners, butchers and bakers to go at once. They are already notified and selected. Quaker knows this to be true. Our building batteries are on the Danville Road. This from Quaker. Beware of new and rash counsel. Beware. This I send you by direction of all your friends. No attempt should be made with less than 30,000 cavalry and 10,000 to 15,000 infantrymen to support them, amounting in all to 40 or 45,000 troops. Do not underestimate their strength and desperations. Forces could probably be called into action from 5 to 10 days, 25,000 mostly artillery. Hoax and Kemper's brigades gone to North Carolina, pickets in or about Petersburg. Three regiments of cavalry disbanded by General Lee for want of horses. 
Morgan's applying for a thousand choice men for a raid. This is, is pretty uh, detailed. Pretty uh, fucking detailed, yeah. That's her first letter. Yeah. But if you just read it, it's like, I like flowers. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I, don't, I don't have nary a thought in my head. All, All I, I think about is, oh, wouldn't mm. it be great to be barefoot and pregnant? I wish I had a big curly mustache fella in here. <laughs> well, I'm right. To big fuck guy. my mother. I, I, this lady's right then. about her mustache. Yeah, I wish All I right. could be riding that mustache. And I wish that fella with the mustache had a son. Uh, and his name could be Paul. Yeah. And he would be uncut. So Which she's fine. Anyways, these days. put this letter over a flame. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It will self destruct. So, so she also had a secret spot in her, uh, you know, in her in her house. Tell me where. Um, oh, on, on, each side, spot, on each side of the fireplace was a pilaster a column. It reached about uh, two thirds of the way toward the mantel shelf. These were surmounted by two br- small bronze figures of some animal in crouching postures. They were quite small and Tigers, hollow, dragons. made in halves. The crack where the halves came together opens enough to easily admit a letter. Here it is, then. She deposited, as in a U- U.S. mailbox or letters for the Union generals, she had put them in there while alone in the room, and no matter if she were watched, it would never be known what she was doing. And then she would leave, and one of her black servants would take the letter to someone else who right. would take it to someone else uh, and who would take it to someone else. And, and, and so what her servants would do is because of this, it just looked like they were just stirring the fire. Right. right. And as they were stirring the fire, they would take the letter. The fire rises. <laughs> and so, you know, during this time, they have these Confederate, you know, soldiers and commanders in and yeah. it's just, oh, here's that guy stirring the fire and I right. was going out to pick up some apples or some shit. It's like in the wire, you know, when they would, like drop the thing underneath the bench and then some yeah, guy yeah. walks and grabs the fucking thing from him. It just looks like, you know, they're at a bench. Right. I'm glad to see them in here in a modern slave home that the family <laughs> is. Yeah, <laughs> like a, a good American uh-huh. home where four to five people take turns well, look stirring at the pot for some reason and... Looking very interested with this statue on the on the on the the, the the pillar, but it's good that you got a few slaves around here. We know you're a good American family, and they all seem to be reading a lot. Yeah. So uh, 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 later that that year, I think we're in eight, we're 1864. The uh, there's uh, a famous escape of Union soldiers out of Libby Prison, and I'll cover that in a Patreon. Um, and while she doesn't have any direct um, interaction to help this, you know, she's, she, um, is uh, the day, the night it happens, she's actually going to help her brother get out of, um, some, uh, service because he's been called up to do, you know, fucking kill people. And he's like, I don't really want to. Um, and so she goes and smooth talks someone to get him out of that. And she comes back and she finds out that one of her servants at actually all of these prisoners showed up and the guy was like, seems like a trap. Get the fuck out of here. And she comes back to realize, like, she had beds set up and everything, and she's like, okay. Well, you know, hey, good judgment. That's why we're still here. Was it a trap? No. No, they, uh, were, they were really escapees, and they needed but help. But you know what? Good for him. Yeah. No. And, safe than sorry about And uh, so they eventually, like, a lot of them were captured. Um, some of them did escape, and she was able to meet some of them at, at another unionist house. And one of them, he asks, like... Hey, you know, what in your opinion, what's the war about? And she's like, well, it's just, you know, it's a hot-headed South. And then uh, this man named Colonel Strait. And then like something like a week later Strait. or uh, sometime later, she sits down and she re- rethinks that answer and she writes a whole letter to him about what she really, th- she was like, uh-huh. at that time, you know, it's like she wasn't sure that he's... An abolitionist. Right. Yeah. On the in this and moment, she's like, I don't want to say anything. Yeah. Let's just... You don't want to. And then she writes, she writes Very a good. whole letter to him. And she writes that slavery was, quote, the whole and sole cause for the war. And she writes, quote, slave power crushes freedom of labor. Slave power is arrogant, is jealous, is an, an intrusive, is cruel, is despotic. Not only over the slave, but over the community, the state. Slave power was losing the strength before the increasing influence of honest and enlightened free labor. I think this is one of the most deeply interesting of questions, but I cannot enter into it now. It is a vast field in which I have gathered many facts. I have thought and felt deeply on this subject. I would be glad to speak with you, but the time is not now. She writes, unless you want to have my head taken off by the powers that be, do not contact me. Unless it's written in human urine. (laughs) But it is interesting that after that brief moment, she's like, no, I really want to actually establish. And and like, that's a conscious thing. Like your self-conscious, like, I have to, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta say something. Yeah. 
Well, not only that, but like it's a thing too where you go like, um, you're a man asking a woman an opinion, which is rare. <laughs> And she's supposed to be, you know, a stupid bell. It's like, I just host parties. Oh, they from just time seem, to time. they must have uh, so woke up on the wrong side of the country. And so somebody, somebody cares to ask. Right. And then you kind of do like a thing. And then you go like, you know what? I'm kind of letting down the idea of asking women yeah. their opinion about nuanced subjects if I don't properly answer it. It was, it, was, it was definitely something that stuck with her. And she's like, fuck. You know, it's like you have a moment with someone. I should have said, oh, man, I yeah, should have said. <laughs> exactly, I should have. Yeah, I, you know, I kept thinking about what you say and, like, all that sort of thing. And it, But it is a thing, too, where you go, like, the, even the people that would be for slavery, there must be some kind of feeling from the abolitionists where they go, like, we all know this is intrinsically wrong. Right, right. And we're now living with this disease within us and acting like it's not there. And you and, see it every day. And we see it every day, and it's a person that we look in the eyes, the same as ours, and we, and we see that this is happening, and we justify it in these insane mental gymnastics to make it okay. And underneath it all, we all know it's fucked. Yeah. So, like, for the health of the country, period. It's fucking, I mean, let's not act like this is not a disgrace. Yeah, exactly. You know. So, um, February 1864, she visits uh, the v Bell Island prison. She talks her way into visiting it. <laughs> I'm a bell of the ball. Hell, let me in here, Bell Island. Oh, did these guys look like shit? <laughs> they smell like it too. Well, in essence, yes. Yeah, she writes, uh, "It surpassed <laughs> in wretchedness and squalid filth my most vivid imagination." Yeah. Uh, because like, like there's after the buildings are full, there's just guys just like all shitting over on the, the floor. Yeah. And like it's the penthouse, penthouse. And, you know, it's just a coincidence. But on that same day that she visits that prison, hundreds of miles north, General George Meade sanctions a raid to free Union prisoners in Richmond. Uh oh. And this is the plan uh, General H. Judson Kilpatrick, his nickname was Kill Cavalry by his soldiers because he was a reckless and uh, uh, brave idiot. Mm. The best kind. Yeah. A uh, 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 Teddy Roosevelt type, I assume. Yeah, I mean... Let's it, get on in there. Yeah, let's just... I mean, you know... Plus, I'm drunk. He lived this long. <laughs> He's a general. Um, Plus, I fought it. He had an idea. He had, a, he, he had a plan. It was an intriguing plan. It wasn't a good one, but it was an intriguing plan. Now, Kilpatrick, Kilpatrick said, I'm going to take 3,000 troops. I'm going to hit Richmond from the Northwest. Well, this other guy, Col uh, Colonel Ulrich Dahlgren... He's going to hit him from the south with 460 men. And so you okay. 11% like uh, of what I have. Yeah, just a little. Here's some surprise. Well, you know, we'll get him and we'll free these Union prisoners. Thousands and thousands of Union prisoners. You're like, what are you going to do after you're free? Are you going to fucking, like, walk? What, are they going to be a piggyback ride on each other? Yeah. Now, Dahlgren, he's the son of Rear Admiral John Dahlgren. Huge, huge big guy, way up there. And Dahlgren, Sounds like a big guy. Dahlgren is, you know, he's in search of glory. He lost a leg at Gettysburg. Found it. And he wrote to his dad, he said, if this plan is successful, it's, quote, the grandest thing on earth. Uh, he's also a total piece of shit. So after a few days, Kilpatrick reaches the city, uh, and then he faces resistance and says, fuck it, and leaves. Dahlgren has no idea this, that Kilpatrick has left. <laughs> so Dahlgren keeps going. Oh, that's so fucked. And they ford a oh. river... And they attempt to ford a second river, but because of heavy rains, they can't pass it. And Dahlgren's guide on this was uh, a black man named Martin Robinson, who was appointed by the Bureau of Military Intelligence. You know, Union Bureau said, you know, this guy knows how, how to, he'll take you. Dahlgren says, we can't ford this river. This black guy fucked up, hangs him with his own horse reins. What? Oh, God. Yeah. It's, there's there's no good part to that other than I just want to point out that he's a piece of shit. shit. Yeah. So anyway, Dahlgren hangs a federal <clears throat> government employee. Yes, and Dahlgren also doesn't realize that as he was making these maneuvers, two of his men were captured by the enemy and have given away the whole thing. So Dahlgren shows up to Richmond. Uh, he sees a force. He can't beat him. He tries to retreat. As he retreats, he's surrounded, and he's shot and killed. And uh, big the, target. The the Confederates they uh, take off his fake leg, 
They cut his pinky off. They, re- they replace his clothes with the Confederate clothes. They put him in a pine box. Uh, they bury him once. And then they're like, oh, okay. Well, no. And they bury him again in a secret spot. And because of, the, because, you know, because of the, the, the Confederates make a claim, they say, we found these documents on him that say, when you get into the city, sack the city and kill Jefferson Davis and rape the women. Right. And it's the perfect plan. And, and, and which I mean, I'm, I, I, it's implied. I'm, and so historians, there's no proof of either side. Historians argue about it. On, on one of the lithographs of the pictures of the papers, Dahlgren's name is misspelled. Right, yeah, yeah. Huh. And so, I don't read so good. Oh. And so, so Varen's like, okay, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at a contemporary uh, artifact from this. And Van, Van Lu is like, yeah, they misspelled his name. That seems like a fake. Some historians today, uh, his Smithsonian did like a handwriting match, and they're like, we're pretty sure it's him. <laughs> so... He was Whatever. a piece of shit. Whatever the papers come out and the South screams bloody murder, they say, look at this. Look at this terrible stuff. These people are going to savage us if They're they savages. get savages. It was slave owners. So, so it becomes this scandal, and that's why they rebury the bodies, and they, they hide it, and it's a secret, and so no one can find it. <laughs> we buried him as a confederate. His sacrifice will never be forgotten. What, like, what are they doing? What are they talking about? So, there's Pinky. <laughs> <laughs> Van Lu hears about Elizabeth Van Lu. She hears about this and she feels like his body has been savaged and he had a bad death and she decides she wants to give him a good death. Mm. So a, she a good death or a good burial? Well, it's it, it, it's it, they're they're both kind of one and the same. Huh. Well, decapitate him with dignity. <laughs> well, no, no. See, see, see. The, 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 the thing that happens before the burial is, you know, kind of this recitation, this kind of meeting of everybody saying, you know, this is blah blah blah. Here he is, blah blah. Here to the heaven, you know. Oh. This, 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 a this, nice, this a nice burial, right, right, right. And, and let it be and, remembered that his pink was full to stink. <laughs> That's right. And so she, <laughs> using her network, she uh, has uh, FWE Loman. Uh, with the German man, uh, talk to people, and he talks to one guy, or talks to another, and he goes, and he finds a black grave digger who was just like at the, was working at the cemetery. While well, all these guys came in and secretly buried this body, and then left, and he's like, oh, it's just there. I right? just saw it. oh. they're o- it's over there. He's just oh, like, okay. yeah, I saw it. I have an idea. Yeah, <laughs> I bury whites for free, <laughs> <laughs> two for one. <laughs> so on, on April sixth. <laughs> Under the cover of hard grave dig- under the cover of a midnight storm, the Loman brothers and this guy named Martin Lipscomb and that black d- grave digger, they dig up. The Aren't grave. we like a motley crew here digging up <laughs> <laughs> a couple of Germans and a black fellow that uh. is absolutely loathing of the whites? <laughs> we really are something, aren't we? In the middle of this crazy storm. <laughs> <laughs> so they dig him up. Hope I never get into a war with you guys. <laughs> <laughs> they dig it. They dig twice. Up, <laughs> they dig up. They dig up the the pine box. They take the top off. They see his bitch in the leg. Okay, great. We got the right guy. Oh, I think we found him. <laughs> pinky too. <laughs> Super kinky. <laughs> Cut or uncut? Check his pinky. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> so they, they put him on a wagon. They take him to the Rowley farm. There they put him in a metal coffin. There's only two in the city, but they have one. They put him in a metal coffin. Elizabeth and her mother both show up, and everybody pays their respects. And this is how you give him a good death. Yeah. They cut off locks of his hair as a memento and to send him to his father to say, hey, you know. Who else's hair could this be? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Surely not from a horse or anything like that. Oh. I have a pinky if you want that too. <laughs> There's one left. <laughs> I have the foreskin. <laughs> I usually tossed it in some calamari. <laughs> no. No, I don't know. What that, John. What? Yeah. That is no chewy. one can no. tell the difference. No, nobody knows. It's a fine gorgonzola. It's not like it's a no. pig anus or something like that. So they move him to He a, wasn't a cop. <laughs> they move him to a farm outside the city. Where he's buried again until the end of the war. They had the black guy dig it, didn't they? <laughs> no, it didn't. They, <laughs> I they buried were, him 40 it, foot deep. It, it might have been Rowley, who was a black guy. <clears throat> anyway, so 
but then before they're able to send, you know, they're sending they're like they they put the hair in a fucking bag and they send it up to Dalton's oh, with a dad. But before it gets there, the union and all of this like you know uh, 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 noise, the South, the Confederates are convinced like okay, well fine, we'll dig him up and we'll send we'll send his body north. And they go to dig up his body. Gone. There is no. Yeah. There's no body there. And the paper reports that he must have risen, ascended. <laughs> there's only one explanation. Yeah. <laughs> Even though there were three sets of footprints yes. and two shovels <laughs> next to the empty grave, there's only one explanation. We've only got one book in town, <laughs> and it's the good one. Yeah. It's the good book, and that's the only oh thing. Well. <laughs> <laughs> this dumbass that invaded a town completely outnumbered. He must have done one of his own people. <laughs> so, so as you know, it, it seems like an insane, Hanged. unnecessary amount of work, right? Right. Yeah. But as, 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 uh, as you know, and it is. It's it, it is. Most of this is a totally more gonna... trouble than it's worth. But but so as as Varen writes, she, she writes uh, Van Loo and her companions are not re- rendering a bad not just not only rendering a bad death into a good one. They are enacting a ritual, one of many they enacted to sustain their own morale. Ah, uh, so it was ah, uh, so it was for their own uh, right. Uh, so a it, shot in the arm. So as, as she writes, um, you know, preparing the rooms for McClellan. Every now and then, Richmond would have a fast day. The city would have a fast day, so no one would eat. 22 hours? And, yeah. And, it's uh, fast. And 24. And when, during the Richmond fast days, Elizabeth and her mother always prided themselves on throwing the biggest feast they could. On the day of the fast? Yes. In order to rebel against the city. Come fast. and get oh, it. Come good. and get it, shitheads. Oh, and so they, it would be all just the homies. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nice. Nice. Uh, like a fucking three hundred dollar turkey, oh yeah, guys pinkies, hair, yeah. and calamari, and, and and lastly, as Varen writes, resistance was first and foremost a moral responsibility. And seeing in this light, the dog in rebel looks not so much like an act of brazenness, bravado, but a solemn fulfillment of a profound obligation. Hmm. Of like, this is what we do. And but you know, as she points out, plus it felt the porridge was good. really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's also <laughs> called Sunday dinner. <laughs> <laughs> These grits ain't gonna eat themselves. <laughs> but, you, but you think about like you know the, the you know in the midst of a French resistance, you know there's like you know there's one moment where you're like, hey, this makes us all feel good, and we can we can pick it up again tomorrow from here, right? And any yeah. sort of well, you have you have to because it gets. Tiresome and it's exhausting. It's, yes, yeah, yeah, so yeah. You gotta eat. I think it also would be weird for her too, as you know, a uh, a, a privileged person um, to see uh, the complete lack of conviction on the part of uh, the people that were like, well, I don't fucking care. I just need to feed my family. Sure. And so they're going like, ah oh, man, and then these fucking Northerners that I'm siding with, they're still coming down here and killing these dudes that don't care right, right. but are forced to care. And like the whole thing is a fucking tragedy. Yes, it is, yeah, it, exactly. the whole thing is a tragedy yes. for the country, is which is what she said, right? right? Um, but yeah, it's 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 a thing, you know, from from a position of the privilege of education first and wealth, um, that you can have that perspective where you go like, what a waste. Yeah, for yeah. all of it. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. it's what a waste for all of it. Um, okay, so we have two we have two pages left here. By late spring uh, 1864, Grant's now in charge of the Union Army, and he has, he's finally figured, you know, he's put together these final plans for how to make, just finish this fucking war. And so he has, he decides he's going to squeeze the Confederacy, and he's playing this war of attrition. He knows he has the numbers. He knows that all he has to do is just keep grinding Lee down, even if they lose a battle. You have to keep grinding him down. Mm-hmm. Eventually, the South is going to run out of men, on, unlike the North. And so he has General Meade take on Lee just like straight away. He has General Sherman work his way into the deep South. He has Butler hitting Richmond from the South. And Grand, and then he has, I forget who, but like attacking the Shenandoah Valley, which the Shenandoah Valley was the reinforcements for Lee. So you keep the reinforcements at bay, though they can't reinforce and yeah. then you attack from every other angle, and he knows that if he takes Petersburg, he's going to take Richmond because they're basically right next to each other. Yeah. And, of course, it's awful, awful fighting. 
Yeah. Grant joins Meade and takes and, and is in charge of the Army of the Potomac. You know, as Farron writes, you know, basically stating the Army of the Potomac is is the most important army in all of this. Yeah, everyone's and, dying of infection. And the fucking right. yeah, mo- most people it's just their feet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. But the the thing that, that that's that's so fascinating too is just the, like you know he was stood in the Shenandoah reinforcements and he's just still on the Caesar playbook. Like the warfare is still the same in that way. Sure. Where it's like just fucking going with this thing and then have the reinforcements sap morale. Like right, right. Warfare well, still hadn't changed that much. Well, if you if you if you give Lee no trouble in Shenandoah, anytime Lee has trouble, the Shenandoah is going to show up with reinforcements. Yeah. They're going to fight you back. Then they'll go back to the Shenandoah. Right, right, right. And then now you haven't gained anything other than so dead. Yeah, people. So this is some of the worst fighting in the war. They fight in the wilderness uh, where the Union lost 18,000. The Confederates lost 10.8 thousand. All it, to bears. <laughs> <laughs> it was one coked up bear. And, and they were fighting a common enemy the whole time, which is the bear, which is, yeah. And insects. And incest. And incest. The South, man. Well, I mean, I mean, they were fighting nature, but not in that sense. Mm-hmm. It was the, actually, it was the joim. The joim. Well, the joim is what no, killed no, most no, people. No. What, what killed most people in the wilderness was that uh, after Bigfoot. the battle. Swampfoot. The wilderness is, is it was just this uh, uh, insane collection of like brambles and... And, Thorns and, 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 and yeah, and you're possums. You're not running through an open field here. No. You're running through fucking garbage nature. It's the shit. No offense. You're Gar- run- <laughs> Who are you gonna garbage offend? nature. Are you gonna offend yeah, the squirrel? I don't know. People love it. <laughs> what are you saying? No offense. The no the, garbage. The garbage. There's a no. reason it's you know, there. There's no garbage there. There are people <laughs> haven't been there. There's no garbage. Matt, Just, the, the, it's, garbage it's outside it sucks <laughs> no you're totally right i've been saying this for years i know is it outside i know, I know. it sucks well here's how Dude, it sucks e- the here's best. how it sucked even worse oh, fuck out of here so in the wil- some outside in the wilderness where they're losing fucking thir- 35 40 000 people you just from this battle now. a lot of the soldiers they lost were people who were wounded during the battle stuck in the wilderness and then through lightning or something else Lightning? The forest caught fire. L- oh. light- <laughs> the forest caught fire. That's what happens to forests. And there are thousands and thousands of wounded men. And everybody who's out in the fields outside of this <laughs> just spends the entire night hearing these men scream as they get burned to Oh, death. my God. Yeah. <laughs> the beaver damn tenements are going up in <laughs> cinders. The beavers didn't build it to code. God damn it! I've been writing letters to the magistrate for weeks. These goddamn beavers have them too close to the river. I think I there should be federal oversight. I state. can't believe there isn't some sort of centralized governing body <laughs> issuing standardized codes. I think fucking... there should be some kind of fuck states rights. Yeah, fuck states rights. <laughs> That's the real. What's what this war's about? <laughs> it's beaver code. <laughs> they were too close. Everybody knew it was coming. Everybody. Everybody. Uh, now my, my foot was swollen. an accident waiting to happen. I'm bleeding. I'm dying of diarrhea. <laughs> I'm <mean>. burning <laughs> to death because the beavers built their dam too close to the brambleberry bush. <laughs> Everyone knows that's a death trap. My feet stink. <laughs> Plus, I farted. <laughs> That goes up in flames. Methane gas noted noted for its flammability. <laughs> if the smell doesn't kill you, the flames will. <laughs> Welcome to you in the jungle now, baby. <laughs> that was Sherman's secret. God, the jungle, he just, yeah. mar- he just marched hey. through Savannah and just uh, he steamrolled through all them <laughs> damn God, the beavers that were lost. Sher- where did Sherman Sherman burn Atlanta? What did Sherman? Yeah, 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 yeah that's man. what it was. Savannah, sorry. Some say he's still burning it. Now, uh, so Are you it, talking it, about Hotland? After that, Spotsylvania, at the bloody angle, they each lost 7,000 in one day. The north and the south. Yeah. And as all this is happening, Elizabeth is still feeding Butler, uh, you know, troop movements of, of what's going on at Richmond. Again, she mentions she mentions that uh, in her journal that she gets most of this from black unionists. Um. Butler, though, he would get ground down. He, he wouldn't be able to reach R- Richmond, and Grant would get stuck at Cold Harbor, about 15 miles from Richmond. 
and Grant would send wave after wave of men at Cold Harbor, and they would just the the Lee's army had had this had 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 dug in, and basically were impenetrable. And Grant would go on to say that this was like sending those men was the worst decision he had made the entire war. Jesus, because they were just slaughtered. They were just slaughtered. Fucking hey. And as the Union approaches uh, Richmond, the the underground shifted from helping prisoners to to more intelligence gathering. And June 1864, Van Lu is now sending her info to this guy George Sharp, Colonel George Sharp. He's Sharp. He's the intelligence chief of the Army of the Potomac. He had, and he had a better sense of what to do with his info to the point where he started sending letters to Elizabeth asking for. Sp- specific info right and so then she would have people come to her and she'd say go find this out find this out find this out find this out they'd bring all this info to her she'd figure out how to uh, how to how to how to you know mm-hmm. write that to sharp in a way right. that uh, made package sense it. package it yeah and, 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 and also when you have an idea of what you're looking for exactly that really makes the search or, or the, you know that that information quest a little bit more fruitful Miss right. Van Lu, we got information. Yeah, that, like, uh, that, uh, they had three turkeys down at the villa. Yeah, like you need. I'm not looking for that. Miss Lippy's right. car is green. Yes. <laughs> Billy likes to drink soda. <laughs> it's Mrs. Lippy. <laughs> also, uh, the, the, the Beaver Dam is a tinder box <laughs> waiting to go up. It's, it's, not a, it's a hot bath. Oh yeah, you want a swamp it, now? It's a, it's a death trap, Miss Lippy. They got it. <laughs> So, so what, what, they got the gasoline. Right. Well, so so what these servants would do? They would go into Richmond, uh, you know, and even servants from other farms too. They go into Richmond with things to sell. They would sell like milk and eggs and chicken, beaver pelts. And, and uh, what they would do is they would wear th- these th- thick-soled shoes, and they never wore the same shoes out of the city that they wore into the city. Oh, and in each of these soles, the shoe, the the soles were hollow. Me, and they me, would, too, me too. They would they would fill it with <laughs> they would fill it with with you know uh, 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 lines, letters, maps, plans, and then this would all go to Sharp and eventually General Grant. Mm. Every man walked out a half inch shorter. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but walked a little taller. Now around this time too, uh, or maybe a little bit before that, Mary Jane, that uh, the woman who went to Liberia earlier, yeah, she. Um, and a lot of this, like, uh, uh, Varen, and, and this is, is written in the early 2000, uh, 2001 or something, she doesn't have this info, and more info has come out from, this is from Lois Levine, and she writes how Mary Jane uh, started working as a servant in the Jefferson Davis household. Whoa. Oh. And one of her jobs was to get Jefferson Davis's wife's dresses, you know, fixed. And, Smell them. And so she would... She would be in. She would be in Jefferson Davis' house. Jefferson Davis's house. Sometimes she even saw the co- the Confederate Congress, and she so she would go to a seamstress she knew, that Van Lu knew, and she'd go to the seamstress and she would say, "Hey, this is what all they heard." All right. And so now Grant is getting info straight from the head of the Confederacy. Wow. Right. Wow. <laughs> from and she's from, below from, suspicion. Yeah. From the the Confederate Congress. Yeah. Like like she would have the. The details in the meetings. Yeah. And you'd be like, the swamp need more money. <laughs> There's a lot of that. And Grant was like, I don't know what to do with this. I, w- I don't want it drained. I love it. I mean, it's, it's so even to the point where. I wish we could kick these goddamn beavers out. <laughs> so, so, I think that's something we in the Northerners have in common. A common ground. <laughs> they slap you get to that tenement and they build up and they live free in the swamp. They call me a living rent free, lighting up all the good white yeah. man swamp land. Spoiling all the good algae from my Pooling up all the water, accepting mosquitoes, living rent free, <laughs> spreading them cholera and malaria around. So. <laughs> <laughs> If only the Northerners knew our shared disdain for the beaver, <laughs> we could unite together. I think about the North and the South as a beaver and a gator. <laughs> do, not, bring, and the, do not bring the gators in. Do not bring the gators in. Do not bring the gators in. We both have a tale to tell. <laughs> so, so, 
uh, uh, in, in uh, from June until October 1864. So Grant makes this this brilliant move under the or under the the cover of night. He basically shifts his entire army over into drag around. <laughs> around. Hey, just ladies, don't mind us. He moves the he, Confederate lady. He moves them around Lee. And I believe he when he crosses uh, maybe the James River, and he makes this brilliant move under the car, uh, cover of darkness, or he moves thousands and thousands and thousands of men, so that they 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 move, and now they're ba- surrounding. Fr- in, in, no, they're in front of Petersburg. He doesn't surround them. That would be too. That'd be too easily spotted. Mm. He moves them basically back and to the left, like Kennedy's to the head. Right. Yes, yeah, to, the, to their left. Yeah. And so they move. They move in front of Petersburg, and with now with the beaver from June until October of 1864, he's assault. He's assaulting Lee at Petersburg, and he has this idea of this kind of pendulum attack, where he'll attack Lee on one side. So Lee will send reinforcements there, and then when that happens, he will swing the attack to the other end of Lee's line from where the. Inf- so Lee has to send reinforcements there, and as he's doing this, it's just this slowly. It's like a cat and mouse Attrition. game. Yeah, yeah, chipping away. From the sides. And Peter's like doing- a beaver does to a log. <laughs> to a- <laughs> Behind its own dam. <laughs> and so around this time... Because they're the damn Yankees. <laughs> around this time, uh, Jefferson Davis... Uh, <laughs> word gets to Grant that Jefferson Davis has actually called an entire council of generals to his house to plan out what to do from here. And so Grant gets the info of... Who's going to assist where? Who's going to come from here to do what? Who is so? Because Mary Jane, yes, has got her ear up to the door. Yes. Uh, but but uh, in September of 1864, while they're in the midst of this, Elizabeth discovers from a friend that the confe- the the Confederate bureauc- the the sheriffs and whatnot in town have started the brass taking people in and asking about her, asking them about her about. About what's what's up with what's going on with the Van Loos? Who's that old spinster? Yeah, and the people that they 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 talk to, they say, "Oh, I don't know anything." So like the mother has some pretty serious heavy hangers. What's under that petticoat? <laughs> <laughs> and also, the toilet's been well installed. We don't know who the plumber is, but the mom's toilet is firmly. In- <laughs> it looks great. It's big. The water closet is fully stocked. I'll just tell you, you can, fuck, you can yank on the chain all day. It will not clog. Yeah. Catch my frisbee. <laughs> These are heavy hangers. I'm talking serious taters. There is no potato blight. (laughs) It's as if a beaver himself (laughs) damned up. This is no gator built lady. Okay? We're talking about a serious beaver architect. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry the model is not to scale, but... Bear with me. Also, bears. <laughs> uh, so Hidden scourge. <laughs> Elizabeth starts to note that you know, or a friend to man. She'll go out into the city, <laughs> and she'll be talking to a friend, and she'll turn to talk back to the friend. And in that moment, she turns back. Sometimes there's like a detective just standing there. <laughs> How are you? Like, <laughs> uh, hello, man. Exactly. I understand your father was a farmer or something. Mm. And <laughs> your letters smell like piss. <laughs> <laughs> Why does all your correspondence smell of human urine? It seems these mm. communicators. I'm not complaining, miss. <laughs> these communiques were dictated by beavers, it mm. seems. Mm. So, so, I mean, Vera, Vera knows that uh, Elizabeth and her mother, they were smart. They were very smart. And they always overestimated that uh, they're the, the people that were trying to. They were always like extra care. Good this letter's too long. But Elizabeth <laughs> in, for me to intercept. <laughs> Elizabeth in her journal <laughs> in her journal is indignant. And she is absolutely pissed off that they are considered, you know, bad people. And and she writes that her mother is like just is is, is chill she, out. She writes a uh, quote. Uh, her mother was a uh, quote uh, one who never did aught against their dear young government, and it was ever kind to the people in whose home, for humanity's sake, the Confederate private even found a friend. Oh. I mean, you know, and, she was and, a good humanitarian, regardless. Right. And her mother, you know, her mother would hide people that showed up, but at the same time, her mother would also feed any Confederate that right. showed up. You know? Yeah, man. I mean, it was the same thing we were just saying. Like, you don't even know what you're doing here. Yeah, kid, and kid. And uh, Junior, 
And you know, her to be indignant, you know, it might seem hypocritical, but but Varen also points out this the second thing. This is what um, this is what Elizabeth wrote in her journal about being called a spy. And this would be years later she was called a spy in like the papers, but this is what she writes about it, you know, then, and I think it stands for this moment. She says, quote, I do not know how they can call me a spy, serving my own country within its recognized borders. For my loyalty, am I not branded as a spy by my own country, for which I was willing to lay down my life? Is that honorable or honest? God knows. Right, who is she spying for? And yeah, in her mind, this is my country. I'm not spying. Yeah. This is my country. You're the, you're yeah. the people that... Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, the thing, the fucking, um, in the rock, it's foreign and domestic, sir. <laughs> you know, All it, enemies, yeah. foreign or domestic, whether they be beaver or gator, <laughs> neither of them are going home to fuck the prom queen, sir. <laughs> There are beaver states and gator states, <laughs> but we are the United States. Sir, that's very good to bring it back to. You like that? So now I don't want to be president <laughs> of beaver states <laughs> or gator tails. Slapping together some shoddy tenements <laughs> with my tennis racket There are going to be rules and regulations <laughs> of what kind of dwellings, <laughs> be they marshland, bog, or dam. <laughs> 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 I am requesting for the first hundred days. <laughs> so in uh, early 1865, now Richmond hasn't been taken yet. Uh, Petersburg hasn't fallen yet. Uh, in early 1865, uh, in February, Richmond is now trying. The, the news is obvious, but Richmond is doing its best to like, Richmond basically cancels news. <laughs> <laughs> no news is good news here in Richmond. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> the enemy's at the gates, but uh, we don't talk about uh, that. Save yourselves. They're already dead. <laughs> and uh, they, uh, a suit of clothes at that point in the Richmond costs $1,200, which is about $20,000 today. And that's just like fucking garbage suit of clothes. All right. This is inflation uh -huh. there's nothing like right. don't buy a suit of clothes when your city's getting set <laughs> yeah what do you need a suit for <laughs> the to get buried in the davis dollar ain't was shit <laughs> yeah i mean there's that too yeah i tell you i might go to move down to beaver town i, 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 I might trade in gator skin yeah. i'm gonna dress up like a gator maybe they'll miss me <laughs> i got pretty bad teeth <laughs> i got bad skin and teeth maybe they'll i could they'll just i could just wriggle on by on the ground on my belly like a fucking gator so so now that but also their info is you know, as things, as thing, as the, as the Confederacy. Oh, as the news dries up the info. <laughs> well, yeah. well, no, as, as the Confederacy is is falling apart, um, <laughs> their 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 um, the Unionists' info is is more actionable, and so they in, in early 1865 they they send word to Grant that uh, Jubal Early has only scattered remnants of assorted commands. So Sheridan shows up and just attacks Early and just defeats him, and then so it's like. You know, me like you know. Now they're making immediate movements based on this because everybody's so scattered. Mm -hmm. uh, they even send word to Grant of like, we heard these school these these paper boys are spying on you for General Lee. You know, right. now that now they're doing counterintelligence. Nice. So uh, April second, eighteen sixty five, Union forces. Now they have encircled Petersburg. Lee knows it's over. He slinks back to Richmond. He encourages Jefferson Davis to abandon the city. And Van Loo's talking to a neighbor of hers, and her neighbor says, her, and Van Loo's like, Elizabeth is like, hey, don't you want to get your son? And her, this neighbor is like, I'd rather my son die than the Union take this city. And it's like, oh, our priorities. Okay. Teach their own, I yeah. guess. Uh -huh. right. well, so, and, you know. You sent me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so the, the plan goes into effect. Jefferson Davis flees the city, and then the Confederate soldiers burn it. Damn. Because they don't want the Union uh. to take it. So they start burning, you know, places. Their that, own shit. Yeah. And as they start burning it, the city council has passed a rule saying that all alcohol in the city should be thrown into the gutters because mm -hmm. they don't want anybody to get intoxicated. So then the winds <laughs> pick up some fire and put it into the booze. No. And the rivers are running 
Yeah. The 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 gutters in the city. We are chased running. a beaver up <laughs> north. He he get we what we did we lick it up the the river and the gator had the ultimate say in the south. <laughs> the gator will rise yeah, again yeah, right. against a beaver yeah. with his crafty tenement shoddy fucking uh, architecture. But he's all lickled up. <laughs> now you see he's lickled up, so he's wriggling this way and that. <laughs> but he's got the liquid courage. But also the river's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of is a wash. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, so yeah. it wasn't the best move. Yeah, it was, uh, it's, it's, now with the benefit of hindsight. Yeah, it which was, is 2020. It, it would <laughs> sit to one and have a dozen of the other. But you understand. We, at the we, time, we, it was we were working on dinosaur brain. Yeah, it's a yeah. peanut. I'm a simple I'm a simple gator. I'm a simple gator. From the swamp. I'll see you later. <laughs> On April 3rd, Edward Ripley, uh, a Union soldier, would walk into the city and his recollection of it was, quote, The Confederacy, like a wounded wolf, died gnawing on its own body in insensate pa- passion and fury. Insensate is like careless, like not yeah. giving a shit. And they, yeah, that's what they did. And the, the townspeople are like, fuck, I want to eat. Yeah, now, so, now, now my shit's burnt. Well, the townspeople started sacking the city themselves because and they wanted to fucking eat. Yeah, yeah. And, and they're also going like, hey, uh... What? We lost and what, we're all supposed to kill ourselves or something? Right. Like, uh, Meanwhile, we, the president is gone. Like, thanks for the help, folks. Uh, yeah. So I'm retiring to San Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a like, f- uh, like it's the ultimate sore loser thing. Like, yes. it's not just I'm taking my ball home and going home. It's like I'm lighting the fucking playground on fire. And uh, yeah, like, I, and yeah. even my own teammates and, are gonna burn. And, and yeah. was Jefferson? And it's my playground. And was Jefferson yeah. Davis even in favor of that? It was. Yeah, I mean, was he? I mean, he's the one who signed, Listen, had to sign off. I'm on not it. trying to speak up in favor of. He's the Jefferson one who had Davis. to sign off on but it. But it just seems like one of those. That things, was the. That was. That, that was, was the, the actual plan. plan. That was the plan. Fuck. It was just. We and then to, Sherman was like, you know what? Good idea. Yeah. It's like we <laughs> burning cities down. Perfect. <laughs> We are so like that. we are so desperate to own slaves. We will destroy oh. our own city yeah. for one more day of yeah. fighting. We'll get them to rebuild it. And so you know, the citizens start sacking the city themselves and breaking into stuff. And um, there's a lot of people who are worried their valuables are going to be stolen. Yeah. And so they bring them to the Van Loos, being like, "Hey, let's can we keep our valuables safe at your place? Sure, because we don't know if we trust." We don't trust the Union soldiers, and right now we probably don't trust anybody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's even this moment where Elizabeth is, uh, uh, her nephew uh, is also staying with her, and she writes about this moment um, on April third, when this, you know, the day after Davis has uh, uh, left, and she writes, uh, "We rose about five o'clock. I assume that's a.m. because they don't have the problem I do." I was but tre- half dressed when I happened to glance out the window and saw, saw a large party, part of the city in flames. I did not stop to dress, but with Sister Eliza, ran out of the top of the house. We came down, finished dressing, and then we went to the parlor to see the prisoners. Beds having been made for them there, we had just seated ourselves at the breakfast table when we heard the tune Yankee Doodle. Sister and I ran to the bottom of the guard, and we were overjoyed to see the Yankees marching up Main Street. But I must not forget to mention that the rebels mentioned to set our house on fire, and I believe she means the Confederates. The local Confederates of the neighborhood. Yeah, the rebels. They Rebel meant, scum. So the, the people in the neighborhood see the Union and the place on fire, and they threaten to burn down Elizabeth's house. We'll burn your house now. Don't you and dare. so Elizabeth Van Loo goes out on the front porch, and she says, if you burn down this house, every single house in this neighborhood is going to burn. Because, you know, she had the union on her side. Yeah. Damn. And I know the Gatos, I know the <laughs> Beavles, I know the Yankee Doodle Dandies, and they all got uh, itchy uh, their trigger finger. And so Grant orders his soldiers to surround uh, the Van Lu house and keep it safe. Wow. Wow. And Grant himself, huh? Yes. And then all all these Union soldiers and commanders showed up at the house, and it was like, "Hey, you! I, I I've heard about you." And there's just like this nonstop party. A few months later, General Grant and his wife show up. And, and he was oh. a notorious speeder. <laughs> yes. he, he liked to drive fast. Yes, he did. Yes, he Wait, did. Wait, what? 
In a car? In D.C., no. In a, oh, in a horse. In he, a he got pulled over for speeding. Remember that? Yeah. Cars in the Civil War? Well, well, he was a, a, horse. Coach, a coach. He was riding on a, on a horse. He got pulled over for speeding in D.C. Oh, yes, 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 yes. They yes. radar gunned him. But, but his wife says that uh, Grant said he must call on Miss Van Lu. She has rendered valuable service to the Union. Damn. And uh, they sat down, and I imagine... What a moment that must have been for for her. I hope After you enjoy. Hope you enjoy gruel, Mr. Grant. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a gruel in four years. Uh, it's got calamari in it. <laughs> I'm a beaver and gator clothing. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> my beaver's built a code, Mr. Grant. <laughs> so <laughs> so, uh, so somewhere. Uh, uh, a little bit after this, she records the last uh, um, part of her Civil War journal. And she's writing of um, what she feels about slavery and the, and, and, and the blacks in the city. After all this time, I think I am now pro-slavery. <laughs> <laughs> no, she writes, quote, they feel... <laughs> You know, it's the damnedest thing. Yeah, I've had a change of heart after this whole thing, after all this hullabaloo and the burning down of everything. I was like, well, what if we just said, yeah? Uh-huh. <laughs> Let beavers be beavers and gators be gators. She writes, quote, they feel but cannot tell you, but when eternity shall not the records of time, you'll see written for them by the Almighty their unpenned stories, then to be read before a listening universe. Bottled are their tears on his ear. Mm. Jesus. And uh, as Farron writes, it, it, she seems to say that it's going to be a long time before everybody understands yeah. what's happened with them. Yeah, I still don't think... Uh, <laughs> I think it's still going to be a long time. Yeah. There's been a misunderstanding... I don't understand. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. I do. I do. I'm, I'm lying. So after, after, the, after the war... <laughs> I'm she, not stupid. I'm just a liar. <laughs> after the war, she uh, she gets political, um, and she petitions Grant to name her postmaster of the city. She is named postmaster. With that power, she um, hires uh, black men to be postal workers and integrates her shop. And, of course, with Reconstruction... Canceled by Andrew Johnson. Ugh, damn. Um, you know, this the, that falls away. Even though, uh, as noted, one of the one of the postal workers that she hired, a black man, was so loved by the people he delivered mail to that they would s- throw celebrations for him every now and then. And when he retired, they threw a party for him. Aww. These white citizens. But because she was in Richmond, he bring me Christmas calls every year. Because she was in Richmond, and he looks so good in them shorts, and and the the Confederates um, took power again, mm. uh, 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 she would become an outcast, and she would not be postmaster for for that long. And eventually, she became, uh, as she wrote, "quote I am held in contempt and scorn by the narrow-minded men and women of my city for my loyalty." Socially living as utterly alone in the city of my birth as, I sp- as if I spoke a different language. Mm. And she would become a recluse and a spinster and a crone or a witch. or Wasn't she already? Oh, they called her Crazy Daisy or, you know, whatever. She was just that lady in the rich house who was Who used weirder. to send the mail. Yeah. And, uh, and so everybody, you know, all the kids in the town were told that she was a witch. And uh, she what? was. And so for the rest of her life, she was basically... Um, Strange, a stranger in her own town. Putting hexes on people. And um, one of the men she freed, uh, this man named John, that she helped free from jail, this John Phillips Reynolds Jr. He was actually Paul Revere's niece. Nephew. Same idea. <laughs> Who's that? I don't see gender. gender, whatever. It's fake. And uh, it's gay. And they became, gay. You know, they became correspondents after the war, and he would, his family would send uh, uh, money to her when she needed it because she had run out of money yeah. after the postmaster job. And, Government job, yeah. And, you know, she, she, you know, she always still had the house, but eventually the house became, it deteriorated. Fell into disrepairs. It could, should have had some beavers. Yeah. And, uh... What beaver folk do for you under the table? And she went on, but in September 20, 25, 1900, uh, she had, you know, deteriorated herself, and with her family at her side, September 25th, 1900, uh, she died. And uh, John Phillips Reynolds Jr. Uh, and his family paid for 
um, a, a bronze plaque to be put on her on her headstone. Hey. A black man? No, Paul Revere's uh, nephew. He's white. Who was white? Blickety black. <laughs> no. <laughs> And uh, this is what it says, uh, Elizabeth Van Lu, 1818-1900. She risked everything that is dear to man, friends, fortune, comfort, health, life itself, all for one absorbing desire in her heart that, abs- that slavery might be abolished and the union preserved. Damn. This boulder from the Capitol Hill in Boston is a tribute from Massachusetts friends. Fuck. And she was buried there, and in her will... In Massachusetts to Virginia again. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so fucking interesting. And in, in her will, she left... Uh, 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 John Phillips Reynolds Jr., uh, all of her war papers. And in 1911, he gave these to a man named William Beimer, who was a scholar, apparently. And he writes, with these papers, he writes the first biography of her. Hmm. But when he writes it, completely misunderstanding everything we've just discussed about how she used her, used the idea of Southern femininity to subvert... Uh, to 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 hide in plain sight, he decides to write that she went around town acting like a crazy person, hmm. and so she gets the nickname Crazy Bet. And he would write he would write things like she would walk around town constantly knitting, hmm. and so everybody in town thought she was crazy, and there's no way she could hide all these all this stuff because she was crazy. Hmm. So this is the original. St- this is the story, the story that, that I that heard. That you were, oh, this is a crazy. And I was lady. like, oh, this crazy lady is actually hmm. this secret. When really, that's not as th- yeah. that's completely unnecessary <laughs> because the actual story itself. <laughs> yeah, way better. She would yes. chicken dance through the town, acting as a loon. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, like, what? No. She would dance through town saying crazy shit like "We're all equal and <laughs> <laughs> black people should be free." In essence, yeah. <laughs> this bitch was off her rocker. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> Beaver Dam structures do not <laughs> sound safe <laughs> for anyone. <laughs> it's really good, Matt. That's really nice. Yeah. Man. Southern Bell, the Yankee Spot. <sighs> yeah, it's um, it's yeah, it's a weird thing. The uh, the, the 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 soft uh, kind of like um, uh, wielding of power from women. Yeah. Yes. It, in, yes. In, most eras of history, <laughs> yeah, where, even where now, they're, where they're not allowed to. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, just that—that's—that's that's the weapon that they have. Is the disguise? Yes, uh, but you know, it, it's you know, just it's, it's so funny how how, oh, how easy men fall into it. But, uh, yes. but, but, yeah, but even just you know, the fucking all that shit. Like we're re- I'm reading about the royals now, and it, there's always a guy put in charge and. It's always his mom directing everything behind the scenes. Right, right. I'm talking about like over and over and over and over again. Like, yeah. or his grandmother, mm-hmm. or his aunt, or like whatever. Like, it happens so much. Is so, that that? what you have to say is women are to blame. No, it's just. <laughs> well, they have to have a guy. Hey, John that. said it. John said it. <laughs> and I stand by it. That's right. Matt, that was wonderful. That was Thank really you. great. Really enjoyed that. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, all of the interludes. I think it provoked. I really liked interrupting. Yeah. Yes, I enjoyed that too. Provoked a lot of discussion. Uh, <sighs> do we got to take a long, hard look into, uh, you know, damn construction? And- I mean, yes, it's, yes. It's, it's it's the it's a silent killer, and it's it something is. that we don't talk <laughs> enough about. It's yeah, yes. everyone's and focused on gators. They're but- tinderbox. Yeah, everybody's talking about the gator, but nobody's but it's talking really about-, about the yeah the the, the hidden the, peril. The millions right, of right, beaver right, children right. lost. It's, just, in it's a it's a recipe for disaster dilapidated and- condominiums. It's all gonna come. The house of cards will come crumbling down. Agreed. So. Agreed. Uh, That's how they got Kevin Spacey. Mm. Really wonderful, excellent, uh, very heroic, beautiful story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a, a the persistence to it that yeah she and yeah and also thing. just you know being a traitor in your own country is like this thing to have to reckon with. That's so absurd and insane. Where you go like, I never left. You left me. You yeah, know, it's like right. what Reagan right. says about the Democratic Party or whatever. But she's yeah, feeling she's feeling the same way yeah. from the beginning and the after, and she's still. Even after it's back to being the union, they're still acting like you're the weirdo. Well, and she, you go like, no. She's, I mean, a, she's accepted as a spy because she lies about who she is. And then the truth comes out 
in what's supposed to be the new world. Yeah. And then she's finally uh, 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 cut out by everybody. Yeah. But it also has that thing of, um, you know, the losers become powerful as crybaby losers. Yes. And, and well, they bitch and it's still going on today. And and you go like, oh, now the heroes are fucking like yeah. pathetic and the crybaby losers are all heroes. And right. what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Like you yeah. lost resoundingly. Right. Shut up. Right, and now you can, and and, or, and like and then we and then we placate. <laughs> you know, like yeah, you can't. Goes on and the winners on. aren't always oppressors, and victims aren't always virtuous. Yeah, you lost. It, 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 it's a country that uh, we are, we are. Uh, that Even has, you, Aaron. That has never let themselves fully d- deal with the original sin. To the point where you know, to the point where uh, was Eve. The the South loses, and they still handled handled with white gloves. After you're like, are you okay? Are you happy? They they kill the president, and then the next thing that happens is a guy who's sympathetic to the guys who killed the president is now president, and so Reconstruction never really happens, and we never really deal with slavery. And then Jim Crow comes in, and we still don't deal with slavery. Yeah. And then uh, LBJ tries to pass voting laws, and we don't deal with that because we're constantly fighting our way, we're clawing, yes. clawing this stuff. The Supreme yeah, Court yeah, says, yeah, yeah, yeah. says, you know, uh, first off, Citizens United, or she, was it Shelby and Holder, it, it, the, 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 the getting rid of pre-clearance with yeah. southern states who have, a, who have a problem with racism, getting rid of pre-clearance right. when they change their voting laws. But also, there's a, there's, a, there's a very highly lost opportunity, and I think you will understand this, and agree with this too, is that it's it's the failed um, enactment of the Marshall Plan for the South. Yes, and p- a big part of that is realizing like you poor people we shouldn't be beholden to these. Uh, you sh- all got sh- swindled, Sheldon Adelson yeah. level rich people, like Absolutely. insane. You've been Absolutely. tricked to voting against your yeah. own interest for years, and and not only that, but you yeah. deserve an opportunity to have. Uh, and start wearing some shoes. A good life. Well, you can't with, af- you, with, with now. Let's souls. let's help you afford shoes. Yeah, so you don't get fucking parasites and shit. And we never got that opportunity because they they still politicized the glory of being a loser fighting for something that was wrong. Yes. Yeah. And so instead yes. of being able to like True. educate people and give them opportunities economically and stuff, you know, it's how are you going to turn around ignorant white people without showing them. You know, like, not. It's not good. Jobs don't just belong to people in New York. Right. You should have <laughs> yes. them too. Of course, you yes. should have them too. Yeah. Of course, you should have a, a, like a good paying wage and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Because if you can, you know, make people super desperate, and you go like, oh, well, you know what your problem is is the people beneath you. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, like yeah. they'll they'll fall for it. It's been shown time and time again. You're, you're, you're like, getting yes. angry because someone bought and you can salmon. pay them less. Yeah. Because it's more than zero. Yeah. And you can say, well, at least you're not getting paid zero. Right. The, the, the machinations that get people angry because someone on food stamps bought salmon. Like, yes. Like, don't you have yeah. your own shit to care about? But not only that, but, you, you, you know, humans need, like, omega fucking sixes and threes. We gotta have the omegas. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's true. It's the thing where you go, like, well, it's, it's, you know, uh, it's Nestle saying water is not a human right. Right. Uh, but that goes all back to the idea of deserve. And this is a country, uh, America, that believes that you must, in essence, torture yourself to deserve goodness. Yeah. Unless you were born into richness, in which case uh, you deserve more. Unless you are a... Daughter of the Revolution, or Mayflower, or whatever. It's a torture nonsense. Yeah. Yes. And you go like, "Well, I'm fucking, I'm bloodline, dog. I'm fucking original. I'm fucking <laughs> Plymouth Rock ain't got shit on me." Uh, let's uh, let's wrap Plymouth it. Plymouth Rock ain't got shit on me. Yeah, yes, it's it's yes. a conflation of two different Denzel quotes. That's I've, right. You saw that. You like it. You don't even like Training Day. <laughs> I I think it's ridiculous that it all happens in one day. Yes, um, it's a Training Day. Patreon. Yes. <laughs> Matt, that was excellent. Thanks. I'm going to say goodnight. My name is John Fahey. I'm Aaron Pita. Matt Purcell. Good Goodnight, everybody. We love you. Night.
Stop it, stop it.